It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none. You know, my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. We got a special guest in here today, man. She really don't need no introduction, man. Uh, if you uh, <clears throat> listen to music, uh, hip hop, man, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, if you... Uh, uh, if you been watching all the things that's been going on a lot of times in media, even to where the movement of mothers been moving together who's lost their son, man. Uh, this is Lil Snoop's mother, Denisha Ross. Yeah, hey, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. How are you, you guys good? doing? Man, we're doing great, man. You know, just thanking you for coming even to share this time with us, man. You know, um, just, you know, when I, when I think about you, uh, I was a big fan of your son. You know, I love the fact that because I was watching Meek Mills and, and the moves that, you know, he was making and, right. and I started seeing Lil Snoop and, and the way he would rap and the things that he would do. It was very uh, electrifying. Mm-hmm. So that's something I want to just say thank you for. I never got to meet him. I wish I would have. But just uh, thank you for uh, even allowing us to see that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So right. that's live. I appreciate the uh, compliments, the love that he still gets, you know. Being that he's been gone this long, he still get a lot, a lot of love. So that makes you feel so good, don't oh, it? Oh, man, that, that keep me going. I can yeah, imagine. that keeps me going. And I love the fact that you go out and speak because I remember when we first started, we met a young lady. She had lost her son, and she's from, like, Pleasant Grove area. And we were trying to get her to come on the show because she wanted to talk about it. I her son that. was lost from gun violence. It was actually one of his friends. Yeah. And... um they were still going through the whole situation, so she was still sort of pretty new. And she wanted to talk about it, but all this stuff started happening. She, she didn't get to come on the show. And the only thing I can think about with anybody like that, God put us through situations to help others. It's not always because of you. People are always like, why me, why me? It's not because of you. It's because you don't know who you might help with your story. It might not be somebody that you met face to face. It's somebody mm-hmm. that hear this story mm-hmm. and hear you talking and going through something who want to go kill somebody, who want to go commit suicide, who who can't even. I had a friend in high school. I don't remember. I never told you this story. Um, she had a child and something happened to that child. And after that, she committed suicide. And she was pretty young. She was probably in her 20s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But not everybody can move on after something like that. And I wish that we had social media because that was, you know, I'm older. So I wish back then we didn't have social media for them to really or see all of that, to get encouragement like that. And a lot of people hurt in silence. People will walking out here acting like they're smiling and everything okay and hurting it from inside because they don't want sympathy. They don't want nobody to tell them anything. They just want to hurt. When they go home, they cry. When they leave the house, they leave that at home and they come right back to it. That's why I love what we have nowadays with podcasts, people speaking positivity. Because when people pick up YouTube and they can, in their privacy of their own home, and they can listen to advice through the screens, nobody know. But it might can help so many people mm-hmm. who are listening. That's why I love the fact that you're getting up and talking. Yeah, and, you know, it took me, what I will say, within the first six months I had, I spoke to a college, mm-hmm. right? And I could just rewind that and see how my voice was different. Um, there was a tremble when I spoke because the pain was just so strong at the right. time. Even now, sometimes it just depends on the subject, you know. But once I accepted the assignment, mm-hmm. you know, that God had given me, once I accepted that, I knew what it came with. Um, did I like it? No, you know, but I knew that my son's life was not in vain. He wasn't just a kid that was born. And then, you know, the thought process of why did this happen as far as getting him introduced to the game? Because, you know, we were in a small town, so it was okay with the regular life. I was working two jobs. That was fine for me. So why give him this limelight and then his life gets snatched, right? So I had to go through so many different things. So I understand the suicidal thoughts. Like I wanted to kill myself a couple of times. I was probably hours from doing it and God just did not allow that to happen so then I knew there was a purpose and I found my purpose in life through my son's death I wondered like I've been going through so many things since birth that I can remember from child molestation to 
um, verbal abuse, physical abuse. Let's go back into all of that. I don't mean to cut you because normally we start back from mm-hmm. your beginning and then come up. We sort of jumped into it, but I'm glad that you talked about that because I want to know how you were raised and um, what you went through, if you don't mind going through it. Well, <laughs> I mean, I left And home. where were you raised anyway? Well, I was born in Los Angeles. Okay, okay, California. Yeah, then I ended up having to move to Louisiana, so that's where the whole Jonesboro come in, but I was already, I think, in seventh grade. Oh, so you're still pretty young. Right, and so I left home about 13. Because what? it was no protection at home. You, know, you were I, raised with your mom and dad or just your mom? No, Ooh. my mom. I was raised with my grandmother more, so my mom was kind of in the streets. I don't even know who my dad is as far as, like, I know of him. And then from my understanding, he was murdered as well. Mm. So I just kind of left home because there was no protection. And then... Where did I, you go? I was just from house to house. I was just like, I had older friends. Like, even though I was four, 13 at the 13. time, but it was kind of family at that time. But once 14 came... I was kind of just educated and just was moving. So I had older friends who had their own place. So where did, where did the molestation happen when you were how old, when it started? I was about four. Four. Mm-hmm. Wow. And who, do you remember who? It was my um, aunt's son. Okay, how old was he? Fifteen. Mm. And did you, at four, I don't see four-year-olds really going to say, mom, not mom, but, you know, grandma, you say he was living with you. This is what's happening. Did you tell anybody? I did. I think I was about six. Six. So it, it was happening for a while. Mm-hmm. And what happened when you told it? Um, I was kind of like the black sheep at that point. I was trying to cause trouble in the family. So it was not a good response mm. at all. So that just brought more anger. You know, mm-hmm. um, I just always thought that it was just me. You know, me against the world. And I had this baby. So I'm like, and how old were you me. when you had your baby? I was 15. I had turned 15 in April, and he was born in June. Mm. Are you an only child? No, I'm not. How many are y'all? It's one. I have a one brother, one sister. So it's three of us. You're the youngest I'm or the oldest? Middle. middle. Mm-hmm. So was this molestation or anything like that happening to any one of the other ones? Yeah, it, it did happen. Um, and that's what kind of motivated me to speak because it was happening to my younger sister. And mm. I needed to be a protector then. So I brought it to the light. And that's just, it, went, it was hell from there. Mm. Like hell and she me. didn't leave with you. She stayed home. Well, we wasn't raised in the same home. Oh, you, who who was she living with? She was living with family as well. The family. So I just was with my grandmother. So she was getting molested at a different location. It was the thing is that when I was, it's just like we had a great grandmother house. And yeah, that's just oh, where it so, went down. Oh, okay. Yeah. We okay. Had same, you know. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's. Uh, I always hate when anything like that happened to anyone. I really do. And it'd be surprised how many other people are still going through that even today. You think that that's, you know, with the Me Too movement and all this stuff coming up and whatever, you think that that's just in the past? No. But it's still happening even today. And I think where I was shocked is because it was like happening to little boys as well. I thought mm-hmm. it was just little girls, but I realized little boys as well. Right. They just didn't talk about it because mm-hmm. it looked on it like really bad. Right. Like I'm gay or something like that, which a lot of them aren't. Right. But um, so tell me, so you had him at 14, 15. You were about 15. to be 15. You were still going from house to house at that time? Or no. were you living with his father? Never did that. Um, I had enough common sense to go back to my grandmother's when I was pregnant because I knew that I would need get help. The, I would get the medical attention like it, that I needed as far as the rise to the doctor and the you know, okay. things. So I did go back home during the time that I was, you know, pregnant, pregnant or whatever. And then. Maybe within months of having him, I knew it was just time to go. So we just, I left with him again. Where, Where was the dad? He was in and out of jail. But he was the type of guy, like, if he didn't deal with me, he didn't deal with the kid. So mm. I didn't deal with him long after having birth. You know, I didn't, it was an abusive relationship. I really was just kind of, I felt bullied. And that it was just anger just building up because it's like, who's going to protect me at this point? You got this 19-year-old beating on me. And nobody stopped them. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot of things I went through. And it was just like mental, mental, you know, back-to-back trauma, back-to-back trauma. And I just knew, like, I I had Snoop, and I needed to protect Snoop. That's all I knew. So So where did you go? You say you went? We were, like, sometimes, um, like, I had family there. We're in a small town, so everybody knows everybody. You're talking about in Louisiana. Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So just family's house, friend's house. With a baby. Yes, but Mm -hmm. once I turned 18, I did, you know, get my own place because I was legal enough to do so. Before then, I just had to fend how I could. Were you working? 
I couldn't work. I was only 15. Right. I braided hair, though. Yeah, I was about I to say, yeah. everybody got a hustle. Oh, yeah, do. I did braid hair, and I used to steal everything that we needed. And mm-hmm. I never got caught and never got a record. Wow. You steal? What, wait, wait, that's what I like to get into. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I come in. Because like she was too young you to know, work, no, so she no, did no, what she needed to do. Let me talk to her. Let, can I talk to her now? <laughs> this ahead. is where I cut in at. You were stealing that world. J.C. Penis, Kmart, uh, uh, the, 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 the Safeway. Where was you at? I've done Kmart before. I went to a successful at Kmart. They caught you at Kmart. Something happened. You know how. You had to leave the stuff. I had to leave it. You know, that's kind of how it happened when you really yeah. stealing. You would go in there and, you know, you get your stuff and then somebody follow you. What you keep looking, right. looking at me for? <laughs> Why you following me around? It really, it really be a shadow over you in your mind. Like, the nigga following me, man. But he right not even watching you, but you watching him. Right. And next thing you know. And you're looking suspicious and that's the reason so what it is. So you be like, you know what, let me put this back for now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, we, um, like, I would steal... Sometime out of Walmart, depending on what it was, like what I would do is I'll go in the store, different stores. The mall was different, but sometimes I would go in the store and I would just grab something that was of value and I would just take it to the service desk to get a gift card mm-hmm. so that I can just purchase what I needed. Um, when it came to the mall, I, we would just like get people's bags that went shopping, actually went shopping, and then put those bags in our purse and just go in that particular store and fill them up and just walk out. Mm. So and man, you you had nerve. You got more strong as you walked out. More days. <laughs> no, let me tell you what's so crazy is I remember being in Dillard's, and they cut the lights off, and the door was right there, but I already had everything that was in the area before, so I couldn't even steal nothing. Mm. Like what? But, yeah, I couldn't because I already had everything that was there because we were going so often. Yeah. Like, what do do you steal and you already got it? Mm. So you had a store or something like this, you'll come sell it to somebody or you sold she it to She wasn't to, selling it. No, she was keeping was it for keeping herself. I was keeping it for myself. Yeah. I was not a you wouldn't, you booster. Wouldn't sell it? No. No, I needed it. Whatever I stole, for her, I wore. Herself me or her my baby. Son, um, my sister came and stayed with me when she got pregnant. I was still for me, my son, my sister, and then her baby. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's wild. And then basically y'all be clean as hell. I'm about come clean. that come that come that weekend, everybody popping is kicking it. Everybody clean tags popping everywhere. <laughs> it How was, oh, it go was ahead. more like making sure we was tight for the holidays type mm-hmm. of thing. Like it was more so that like I didn't just go dry stealing at the mall, but if it wasn't something going on the holidays or Christmas they then I needed it's to get it. Yeah, I just needed to do what I needed to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Basically. How old was your sister when she got pregnant? Seventeen, I believe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all young, light skinned and walking around. Yeah, the niggas down there in Louisiana were happy, boy. Y'all was looking good but to I'm them. Be Had them new you. clothes on. <laughs> the thing about it is, when it came to like Snoop Dad, people don't really like to believe my story and my book's going to tell it all, but I was kind of forced into that situation. I oh. Would, because, okay, so we linked up just on some stuff one night. And in my mindset, I'm like, that's just it. Like, we had sex, okay, there's nothing after that, right? But he had a different plan, so he was so abusive, so it put fear in me. Imagine I'm 14. I'm he like was abusive pounds. the first. Cause you know, to me, abusers don't ever start off the first night. They usually like woo you in, and once you you fall in love, whatever, then they start doing all of that mentally. They you ain't nothing. This this this, and then they start to hit you and all of that. No, it was about a week. A and, week. And let me say this before y'all go any further. If she was molested from the time she was four until she was six or seven. Just going into a relationship on the whole is something big for her to even have to try to understand and deal with. So that already was a cloud in order for her to even have to even try. You know what I mean? Going into a relationship with mm-hmm. somebody after you already been mentally and physically abused and now you house to house trying to figure it out. It can't be easy mm-hmm. even to try to deal with a man, period. Right. Let alone an older abusive man. Yeah. So that's the I think that's something to be talked about in itself. You know what I mean? So I get where you're coming from when you yeah. say you was in fear. Why not be in fear when you already done had to deal with situations coming up? Mm-hmm. When it came to sex, that was a fear. That's that fear is automatic at that point. Right. Right. Yep. So that's the whole game. I think that's something, to, uh, you know, a lot of people go through and don't even talk about. Mm hmm. But being, a lot of them being molested um, at such a young age when it was time for you to freely have sex. How hard was that? I don't you know, I think I kind of just. I don't know, I would just say this, I was ashamed of myself, like I've never had sex with Snooze Dad with my shirt off, like we've never had an intimate moment. We just had sex and I had got a baby. But it took a while, like after I think I got married or something, before I was even be comfortable in my own skin, you mm-hmm. know. And so, molestation just carries so long, and 
honestly, I'm in, like I said, I'm in a healing season now. Even healing from that is just still triggering because certain hands look a certain way and certain. So it's just a lot that That's comes true. with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you never got counseling from anyone because I heard you told, told E that you got counseling from God. You didn't seek counseling from anybody? Yeah, I've, I haven't had counseling before like that. Like my grandma used to try to force it on us as like 11-year-olds, but I haven't been to counseling. Wow. God is our counselor anyway. Oh, he's so good. Mm-hmm. He so, so, good. so you 15, you got the baby, y'all running around. Now you turn 16, 17, he three. What type of kid was Lil Snoop? He was rapping then. When he was no. how old? How three old years old? He was like four, I believe. He was rapping then. Um, he would just kind of say something that really didn't make sense the first sentence. And then the next one just would rhyme whatever he said. So the second sentence would make sense. The first one really didn't, you know, wasn't no really words, just something. And then he'll come back with a line that, you know, rhymes mm-hmm. with it. So he was um, very active. I don't know. He was just always different, even from birth. I remember when, you know, he was born, my mom was like, your baby's bad already. And I'm like, what'd he do to, like, the nurse is like, I need help with this one. You know, when you're a newborn baby, this is what the nurses do. So why mm-hmm. do they need help with this right. one? So, yeah, he's already, he was already ready. He came in here ready for whatever. <laughs> he already was ready. But, no, he was just... He didn't start getting like, because you don't want to call your child bad, you know, but you, mm-hmm. I have to be real about Snoop's character. He was only child, so of course he was kind of spoiled, but he already came out with his mind made up. Like, you know, he going to do what he going to do, what he want to do, no matter what. And he'll suffer the consequences later. Like, whatever they are, I'll deal with that later. I'm going to do what I'm going to do right now. Who was and a you being, Who? Sorry, but um, you being a young mom, it was probably hard for you because you didn't know how to really deal with a young child as much, too. Well, we... That was my friend. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, just think about it. Like, I had a Cabbage Patch kid, so I knew how to, you know, like, mm-hmm. even though it's a real baby, you still, there's excitement of teaching them what you learn. And so we kind of grew up together because we're only 15 years right. apart. So I can't say that because, I, I mean, I was mature. from my, Like I said, my friends, I'm 14. My friends are 20, 22. Okay. Like, I'm very mature. I'm ready. <laughs> so I was able to teach him. You know what I what I was able to teach him, and then of course I had older friends too. So it's not like I had to do it by myself when right. it came to that. Who did he look to when it, when you say he was rapping? He had to see it somewhere. What was it that influenced him to even think about rap? I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's in his DNA because his father, if he would have played his cards right, he would have been a rapper or whatever have oh. you. So I think it was just more so in his DNA, and. Um, he just lived out his father's dreams is what he did. Did he ever he run with his father? His father ever did keep he him in all of it? Yeah, he knew him. Um, I think Snoop was three, three or four when his father went to prison. He did 21 years from there. So wow. even before then, he was in and out of jail. You see what I'm saying? So they didn't get a chance to have that that bond at all. And you never took him to the prison to, to No, I him. wasn't going to do that. Because, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't with him. Right. Um, excuse me, but Snoop. Went a couple of times with his grandmother, I think. So, oh, so he did get to see him. He got there. a chance to see him when he felt like it. But Snoop just, I let him learn about his daddy by himself. So if he wanted to go, I let him go. But I didn't promote it. Did you put any male figures in his life so that he could, you know, learn to be a man, so to say? Not really. I was kind of like, you don't tell him nothing. Mm. <laughs> like yeah. I didn't really, yeah. you know, I didn't really play them games like you're not his daddy. And you just can't tell him nothing. I didn't really let nobody too much tell him nothing. That's probably what the he. My mom was like, "Oh, he's running game on you." I'm be like, "Don't tell him nothing." Mm, not <laughs> even his grandma. Like, don't tell him nothing. That's how I feel. Like, don't. I got him. I'm gonna handle it. Wow. So, and and it's funny because, and, and I hate to bring this up, but you sound your story sounds like Water Two Lives, Mom. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Where she, he was spoiled. He was off the chain when he first was born. And all this sound the same. Mm-hmm. He he ended up, you know, get, getting killed. Have you at heard 21. of Water Two Lives? No, I, I, I talked haven't. to him about it, but same thing. If really? I put the interview right here, right mm-hmm. now, it'd be the same way. Wow. That's how she felt about him. Yeah. And he would run game, and he would talk to her and do. Man. That, that that was that was her that, <laughs> that was, was her, her heart. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's the same thing, and it's crazy. But at the end of the day, I understand because when you got someone that's special like that. And and they that 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 character that 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 person is special and it can affect the world. Then I can understand why you would you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I, I could understand why you would even the the chemistry would be like that. Right. You know what I mean. And I mean he tried me, but I have to be real with myself. My son tried me because I was a disrespectful kid to my mom because her being on drugs. I felt like that was okay, right? So I didn't 
wasn't mature enough to realize the respect that I supposed to be given. So when my son started being disrespectful, I had to take that because I'm like, he's only doing what he thought was okay. The difference is I'm not my mama. So I'm not going to tolerate what my mom tolerated from me. Yeah. So that's where the, you know, the difference came in. Like, no, you trying it, but you know, not to play with me either. I could used to could look at Snoop across the room and he would get right. You know, yeah, we yeah. were, we would be at church and, he want to see where he want to sit at church, but when it's altar t- time, you know, altar call time to come, I look across his church, you know, let's get up here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I remember just always taking him because I just knew God had to be the answer, right? And so when I would go to church, I remember the pastor telling me, he said, ma'am, he said, you come up here every Sunday with your son. He said, but God told me to tell you if he wants you, and if you would come in, he'll bring your son in. Mm. I would have wow. break down and start crying right then. I knew I'd been had a calling on my life, right? And I just thought that my little praise was enough. But God had something so deep inside of me that needed to come out. And my son had to go for me to get it. Because wow. you are his example. You don't have to tell somebody what to do. You lead by example and by you following in God's footsteps and where he needed you to be, he would have just follow right behind right you see what yeah. i mean right. yeah no it's just it's it's something else when you you know to to have a son the only son you know what i mean i i i can't imagine going through you know what you went through but as you as he got older you i, I try to stay on course the fact of you and him together but when did when did somebody recognize him outside of you know like meek uh this that he had a talent that that he could take it to the next level? Or did he already know? I think my son had confidence in knowing, but but Meek is who brought him to the light. You know, um, people didn't start tapping in until Meek tapped in. And yeah. that's sad because there's people around around the city, it was the people in Louisiana that was doing music, but it took someone from a different state that came to Louisiana to see it. Cause he, but Snoop already knew he wanted to be a rapper. He kept saying, mama, I don't need school for what I'm going to do. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to be a rapper, you know? And I'm like, okay, well then go rap that work until you get through, you know, like I'm not trying to hear this rapping thing. Cause I was learning about the industry and, and the things of in the evilness I would hear. And I'm like, oh hell no. So I told Snoop, I said, well, you're not going to be a rapper cause you're not about to um, sacrifice me. And he was like, mama, mm-hmm. I'm not going to sacrifice you. I wouldn't do that. I said, I know because you're not going to be a rapper. Mm-hmm. So that was just our conversation with the whole rap thing. So like I said, if it was not for me, then I don't feel like at that particular time, you see that what I'm saying? Then he he wouldn't be where he is now if Meek wouldn't have given him did, that chance. Wh- how was it when Meek first? How did Meek? Because I don't know how did he Approach first you. leak uh, link into I want to you know rock out with Lil Snoop and how right. did you deal with it? Well, Meek had a concert for Grambling State University in 2012. He was um, you know the hot, the headliner for that. And Snoop knew about it. So I think Snoop had been tuned into his uh, freestyles or something. Because mm-hmm. when Snoop told me about Meek, I heard just Meek. That didn't register to me at all. I had to, like, go on YouTube and try to see who Meek Mill was. And Snoop was able to get to the concert and get his demo to Meek that at that concert. And from there, Meek just kind of tweeted, like, you know, I got this young um, guy's demo. It's fire, and he's only 16. And to me, what I seen from that is that's all Meek was going to do. That's all. I mean, he was just like, I'm going to give you a shout out. So that's that. But Snoop, Snoop took that like, he said my name. Motivation. Oh, he said my name. Well, I'm about to go and get in his face now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what he did. So so he basically at that point, what did he do? What was his next move? He came to me and told me that uh, Meek wanted him to come to Philly. This was in, the concert was in October. So a couple of weeks later, he was like, Meek wanted me to come to Philly. And I was like, Snoop, you're not going to Philly. Because I'm working, right? And who going to go to Philly, like, on a say, well, I'm going to go hoping this man sign you. So I'm like, well, you're not going. So we just kind of left it alone. And he came back like, Mama, they going to send my ticket in two weeks. And I was like, boy, you're not going to Philly, so we're not worried about it. You can't go without you. I, and that's I bet. in my mind, right? So then he come back. I got my ticket. But it was a Greyhound ticket. Oh, a bus ticket. A bus ticket. And I was like, Greyhound ticket? What are you sending you? I'm thinking, why would you, you done been down here on a jet and you gonna send for my baby on the ground? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, that. then I hear I go again with my logic thinking self. Well, maybe he just wanna see how bad Snoop wants it. So, you know, yeah. let's just, you know, we going. So then I was like, well, damn, this is real. So, so I started you sent praying. tickets for both of y'all or just? No, it was just one ticket 
for him. But well, he's he, underage. You can't just send a well, ticket you can. for just. He was 16. You can get on the bus. Yeah. yeah. He did it. Yeah. He got I on did there. it at 13. I did it at 13. <laughs> well, so he got yeah, on you there. Can. My 16 year old is not going nowhere no, without me. I got me. on there at 13. This, she just talked. I'd be scared. But this is the thing. Okay. You bad. <laughs> it was a one way. It was just for him. Um, did he even call you? Yeah. Like, I, I seen the T brought the ticket to me. No, I'm saying Meek. Did no. Meek call you in? Not prior. Did, but I spoke to someone who I thought was one of Meek's representatives. Okay. But it wasn't? No. It Little was, Snoop done got somebody to call you. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga got him. He got him. He got him. Yeah, wow. But it was actually a guy who I think knew someone in Meek's team that was from Philly. So. He was actually in Philadelphia. He was the one that was going to pick Snoop up. So I'm just trying to talk with him as we getting everything together. I'm getting because I'm old fashioned when it comes to that. So I knew I've rode Greyhound before. So you need snacks because yeah, you, yeah, you got to have all yeah. that. And it's going to be a long ride. Yeah. So the terminal food is I was like, Snoop, the terminal food is this, this and this. So he calling me the whole time because he's about to get left because he's thinking whoever started on the bus going to end on the same, mm -hmm. you know, the same stop. So he was calling. He almost got left. But I never forget, like, driving to the bus station. Um, well, let's see. When he finally was time to go, and I drove him to the bus station. Now, this is what's funny about it, because I smoke marijuana. Snoop smoked marijuana. But I had never broke that level of respect, right? So we never smoked together. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he called me the night before. He said, Mama... Um, I'm, you know, you know, I want to smoke before I get on the bus, so I'm gonna get such and such to drop me off. I said, "Well, I'm following y'all up there because I'm not gonna just not see you." Off. Right. He was like, "Okay." He called back in about thirty minutes. You know, I'm gonna go on and get you to take me up there, so <laughs> I don't know what transpired. So here I am. I'm going to smoke on the way, but I'm like, man, as I'm driving, should I pass him this? Because he' about to be, you know, seventeen and woo with this and that. I thinking, I was like, "Well, no, nah, I'm not gonna break that level of respect, so I'm just gonna leave the windows up." So you can get a contact. A contact. <laughs> <laughs> so so what did he say? I didn't tell him that. I just did it. So he got to the bus station, and he's like a little kid. He I needed to fill out the little, you know, um, sign ID tags mm -hmm. and all this. He was mama this, so I filled it out. And I just remember crying so hard before he got on that bus. And I want a driver. I would love to meet whoever this bus driver right. is. And I would love to, like, meet him because he was looking at me like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> and I'm just hugging him like, Snoop, if they get to acting weird, you know, you need to say you need to use the bathroom. I'm on my way. I was trying to, like, you know, get him ready Perfect. for something happened. Yeah. And um, Snoop was like, he going to be okay. And he got on the bus. And there was an overpath. And before he could get over, I could still see the bus leaving. And he texted me. He said, Mama, do not cry. I'm about to make our dreams come true. Wow. I'm still thinking we sent for him. Yeah. In this. But state. he just, at this point, he, mm. in his heart, feel like he just want to make his mama proud. That's it. He wants to take care of mama. That's what most boys always be like. I'm going to have mm. her set. I'm doing this for her because she worked so hard. Had him when you were young. That's what a lot of these guys always would say is because you know of what? mom. I think be, with with all of this, I think the message that Snoop wanted me to see is I'm not a fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So when he went, did he call you when he made it? I mean, he called the whole trip because keep in mind, he's a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care what, you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, even getting his first tattoo, mama, what I need to put on this? And so he's still a baby. So he called, called. And what's the funny thing is that when he made it to Haddocksburg, I think it was, his clothes didn't make it the what? same time. So he panicked. But keep in mind, the rap battle happened the very next day of him getting to Philly. Wow. With the, the you know, the battle that so everybody knows wear? about. He had on his clothes, but he didn't they get went to, to the mall. He wanted and, to wear. Yeah, he, he didn't Oh, have he got some stuff. more so clothes. I believe, I'm not really even sure. I hadn't even had the discussion with um, Q to see what he, you know, when he had on what he had on at the rap battle, they had to buy it because, right. I mean, his clothes hadn't made it. Yeah. But him winning at $10,000. They mm. called maybe a day or two after to say that the clothes had made it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, boy, you need to get down there and go get them clothes because you called me all hysterical about the clothes. Now you done got your little money. You don't want to go get probably going shopping with that 10000 exactly. be like, I don't need these clothes. <laughs> but, but he knew one thing. I worked my ass off for them clothes. Because yeah. I ain't stealing no more. Yeah. So I'm going to need you to go get these clothes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so, so he that, went and got them? Oh, he went and got them. So how long was he staying up there for? Because uh, you said, you know, that was a couple of days and then the clothes came. How long did he stay for? I think he was in Philly for about a week after. Once the rap battle happened, I think it was a few more days because then his team 
kind of flew up there within the next couple of days. So they might have been up there maybe maybe a week or two. I just remember yeah, it had to be a week or two because he didn't, he wasn't home for Christmas that year. Mm-hmm. Were you nervous the whole time while he was gone? I kind of wasn't because my son is a survivor. Like, he, he could just, he was his mama's child. And even, like, being in Dallas when I would work, Snoop survived. So I really didn't have that kind of worry. You see Because nobody took care of him while you were at work. He was at home by himself? Even at eight years old, he was start. I, I would just tell him, don't you answer the door. Don't you do this. Don't you. So he was, I had to educate him to have him more mature, just like me. It's a cycle. It's like I had to have him ready mm-hmm. because we don't have anybody else but us. So I need you to be here. You're, t- you're my team player at this point. You're not my kid. You're my team player. We got to make this work. Mm-hmm. So that's how it went. Wow. He, he's... Yeah, that's different, man. So he went up there. He won the battle. Was he, he, he excited? He called you when he won? He won his, He called me as soon as he won. But he said, Mom, I won. But the thing about it, he called me before he went in there. And he said, "Um, I'm about to go perform. To, no, uh, I'm going in here and up. He said it was because it was T.I.'s uh, rap battle. Okay. I mean, his T.I.'s album release party is what okay. it was. So he said, I'm about to go into this rap battle. He said, and Meek is about to put up some money behind me. And this other guy's going to put it up for his artist. And he said something about T.I. And so you know how when you're growing up, just say, friends, you know, your, your, your um, stepdaddy might have been Al Green. You know, your mama might have had a crush. So in them days but prior, before, when Snoop was like seven or eight, when T.I. first came out, I, that was like the little crush <laughs> at the time. Just because I was just a fan of the music more so because I thought I was a rapper. Mm-hmm. So... He um when he said Ti, I said, "Yo, Daddy Ti." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, that was that you can have whatever you like. Time, see. So Snoop yeah. said that was way before then. That was, was it? When, yeah, that was when he um. Oh, that was. What did he come out? And, um, oh, the, you know, the uh, 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 motivation. Uh, uh, yeah, and all, motivation. Yeah, all and, uh, of them, like that uh, whole uh, uh, record. Uh, you don't know me, man. Yeah, the yeah. Whole, yeah, that was the one. So, yeah, you know, um. Head of the body, leader of the team. Oh, dude. man, she <laughs> love that nigga. Yeah, right. so, yeah, so that was so funny. So when Snoop said, Mama, get off the gas. It's not my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that was a little joke we did. But then he's, um, I said, well, I'm going to pray that you win. Hey. And he said, man, I got that in a bag. Mm, and I did. Confidence. Within 30, 40 minutes, he called. He was like, I won. Man, he went that thing. What was in. your reaction? Were you like I jumping was excited for, joy? for him because... It's, it's like, just this, this think about this. This was like a disbelief. Last week, you getting on my nerves to the fullest. You just, whatever, you expel from school. You know, you, you go to GD school. They done pissed you off. You done left from out of there. Mm. So it was just like, look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm excited, but I'm just shocked because I'm watching the front seat. And you have to accept all of this. As much as you saying, you're not going to be a rapper. You're not going yes. this. You're not going that. Gosh, he was determined Cause to be day, what he wanted to be. How can I get in between what him and God had going? Mm. Snoop yeah. prayed so hard. And he asked God for certain things. And so who am I to stand in between what God gave him for his life? And he had a relationship with God. He definitely So he would, he would pray about it, about his career and everything? He got on his knees and prayed about everything. He told me, Mama, sometimes you got to get on your knees and ask God for what you really want. Wow. You know what I love? Because anytime we've had three people pass away from um, that been on our set, right? And like, I t- like the last person that passed away was Walk With Jordan. And when we go back no, in, it was strap. Strap, yeah, you're right. But when we go back and we look at their videos, because we always talk about God with everybody, mm-hmm. and I just love to hear that they believed in God. They knew who God was. You know what? That that like makes me feel happy. Although they're gone, because it's sad when somebody passed away and don't know God. You know what I mean? So I feel sort of like a relief. Like yeah. I know where they are. Right, and what, what I'm grateful for is because even the stories on the road um, have been told to me that they would walk in and check on him, and he was on his knees praying. So he didn't leave that. Mm. He didn't leave yeah. and go there and not I do keep that. it up. So it's like you know, different artists um, that he was around, different friends he was around. He still prayed. I spoke at a juvenile detention center in March, I believe it was, and the uh, supervisor told me that. Snoop got into it with some guy in the gym, and he had a fight with him. He's like, you know, I'm going to run into him when I get in there, right? So <laughs> they have a fight. He said, and I went in there to, you know, check on him after the fight, and he was on his knees praying. So that's why wow. I said, just hearing those testimonies from, that just let me know that he didn't leave. And they say that you, you know, the kid, if you raise them right, they won't stray away. So he knew one thing, like, me taking him to church, that didn't go in vain. Mm-hmm. You know, me 
making sure we at that altar. He if he didn't do nothing else, he prayed. I can't ask for nothing else. That's, that's real. real. That's so real. Um, so when he wins this battle, the next step is you you win a battle. Now you like okay. Now I won that battle. Is he thinking I'm gonna do me a project or a song after that? When when he comes back home, how was it when he came back? He came back home, and this is the thing: when you're in a small town, everybody can't handle fame. That's right. His team, some of them, it's not everybody, but they couldn't handle it. They wasn't used to that. Snoop was like, everybody done got comfortable, like we made it. He said, it's so much work to do. He said, we haven't even got started. So he had to fire some people. Who was all on his team in the beginning? Was it just family members or friends? It was just family. His engineer, and then he had hired my cousin as a manager. Okay. So other than that, he didn't have a big, big team, but at the same time, he knew with business, you know, it was a business thing. And he wasn't signed, like, right away at that time, right? No, he didn't get signed right away. Okay, so um, did Mint Mills ever call you after that? I talked to me after the battle. After the battle. What did he say? He told me he was about to change Snoop's life. Yep. And what did you say to him? I was just, like, I, I'm, like I'm telling y'all, I was like, Y'all see this shit? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all I could think of. Like, I really can't tell you because... You know, that's been some years ago, so I can't even detail and try to make up nothing. I don't really remember. Right. I just remember him telling me he was about to change his life. Mm. Mm-hmm. Man, you know, that's that's heavy. But he gets back. He has to get rid of some of the people on his team. What is this for in his mind? And what he, what does he tell you? Like, I'm ready to uh, go forth with, with, with a project or I'm going to do a song. Or what was the thing that he was focused on when he got back? See, the thing is, um, the demo that he gave me, that was a mixtape that he was about to release okay, in December. Okay. So that was his first that project. Was his first he was project. already working on it, right, and being serious. Um, I remember even putting out songs, which songs I'm thinking is a hit. He wasn't satisfied with them. Yeah, yeah. And he kept saying, Mom, I just need that hit. Yeah. You know, that's what he just, he said, yeah, he said, but it's all, that's good, but I just need that one hit. Yeah. So that's what he was just working on, just getting that one hit. Yeah. And I just feel like he got stole from that. Wow. When, when you think about it, you know, and I'm going to take you back to that time when the whole incident happens and he ends up getting uh, murdered. Mm-hmm. Uh, just walk me into that that situation and how it played out for you. And how old was he when he died? 18. He wasn't 18. that old. Yeah, he had turned 18 on June 13th and he got killed June 20th. Mm. And so was it previous beef or was it? I, I'm really willing to detail what happened? Yeah, because for people who don't know who he no. is or what happened mm-hmm. to him, I don't really know the details. And, That's what I'm right, asking. so you know they'll like to know. Well, I can give y'all a little bit because we do have a documentary, so we just okay. don't want to, you know, okay. yeah. push it out there. But some of this stuff is already yeah, out. Yeah, and it is. Yeah. That's why I don't mind um, speaking about it. He didn't get killed by an enemy. That's okay. the thing. Um, the guy that killed him was in our house. Was at my mom's stand. Um, he was at the funeral with us. Huh? Yeah, the guy came to the funeral because, like I said, the autopsy was not back, so we didn't know for sure. You know, the story he gave us, it didn't make sense, but we couldn't say he was lying because it was just him. It was three people in the room, you know, so it had to be one of you two that did it. So, of course, it's going to be a finger pointing type of thing. But what caused it? What caused the the, the altercation? What happened? (sighs) That's what I don't know. Like, I don't know the real truth because the, the older person told me that basically him and Snoop was playing the game in that That's what I heard. Um, they were playing 2K12 for like $100 or something like that, a game. Oh, but they the, were gambling. Right. But okay. the little friend that Snoop had with him, the guy that actually murdered him because it's not his friend, he kept clutching. He had a gun that he kept clutching. So the older guy told me that that raised a flag for him. Like, what are you doing? I got all this money in here. And and so what what are you doing? So he said he went to the back and got his gun. And I asked him, I said, when you grabbed your gun, did you immediately come out with it pointed or did you, you know, what did you do? He said he immediately come in that, came out with it pointed. You know, the older guy said, Denisha, if I would have just shut it down for that night, you know, mm-hmm. your son would be alive. But he put the young guy out, the killer, he put him out of the apartment. And I'm like, so what did Snoop do? He said he stayed sitting there. Mm-hmm. And the younger guy I mean, he went out. And this out. was at his house. This was at the older person's house. Older person's house, right. was playing the game with. Right, okay. And so he said when he put the guy out, he closed the door. The guy came back banging on the door real loud. It sounded like he was banging with the gun. He said at that time, Snoop got up. They both walked outside. And when he walked out, the guy shot. So Snoop took off running to the left. And the older guy shot up in the air, and he shot once towards the person. 
went back in the house to grab his stuff, and he left the scene. Snoop's killer followed him to where Snoop was running. There was only one way out to run a while. He followed him. Snoop got shot close range, and he was also robbed. So the first time when he shot after Snoop, when he was at the apartment outside, he didn't hit him at that time? No. Or you don't know? He didn't hit him based on the autopsy. Okay, and he ran. Snoop ran. And, but it's whenever he caught up with him, that's when he that's shot That's what made me wonder, like, what happened when you caught up with him? Because it's a close-range shot. Snoop also got shot in his hand. So his hand had to go up when he that's saw that. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. So they were face-to-face. -face. That's what I'm thinking. Based Arguing on or shot. whatever. I feel like this, I'm just, you know, because you got to keep in mind, I was raised in the street, so I'm in the So you know certain things. Yeah, and I'm book smart as well, so it's like... If, if me and you somewhere and I get put out and you don't go with me, I'm going to have an attitude with you. Because we you, you didn't give me no car keys to get in the car and wait on you. You didn't do nothing. You're going to sit here and play So the they game. rode together. They, Snoop was driving. His cousin's vehicle. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, did you get pissed off? But see, he won't yeah. be honest with me to even say I was mad. And so I he, he he I didn't do it. He's still sticking on you didn't do it. Clearly, because I don't know either one of the guys to, to pick one was guilty and one was not guilty. I don't know neither one of y'all, so I'm not going to pick one of you guys. Mm -hmm. I have to go by the black and white that was presented to me. Right. So, mm -hmm. who was somebody convicted? Nobody's been convicted for his life. Wow. Even after these many years. Mm -hmm. So, did they arrest him? They ar originally arrested him and charged him with murder and they charged him with um, armed robbery and then... How did he, he get off? Why? He went and got a lawyer. He brought... He, he, brought a, uh, he wrote an article to the paper pleading his case and he was just trying to help a friend blah 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 but keep in mind his story can stick because there's no autopsy back right. right so he got a lawyer and next thing I know they was like he bonded out of jail for this amount and the charges were changed so wow. once the autopsy was done it was the uh, cricket cop intentionally didn't do a lot of things that were could have been tested and he got thrown out and so there was not enough evidence to support a murder wow because the older guy and the chief of police were in cahoots with, you know, business together, basically, under the table. Wow, so. How yes. angry this made you after you found all Man, of this out? I was, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've been in so many, you know, like when you're on a roller coaster, it's like I go from rage, then I have to go to God. Mm -hmm. Then I go to rage because I'm like, who you playing with? That's what, you know, I just kept thinking. They don't know who they took. They don't know what they did. But at the same time, because Snoop only have me, I can't act off emotions and I can't fumble this. So I got to play it how I need to play it to try to get it because they closed Snoop's case after two years. I got that case reopened mm. myself. You know, I would just sometimes get up at three in the morning when I can't sleep and drive four hours or five hours to the district attorney's office and be like, what are we doing? What's next? What y'all got? So I know I got on their nerves, so they had to do something. So let us just do this to shut this woman up because she's not going to leave us alone. Because I was willing to die behind the justice for him. I didn't have a care. I just knew that something, you can't just close the case and then that's it. And then I contemplated like, God, do I need to just sit still on this? Do I need to let you, are you going to fix this? What do I need mm -hmm. to do? And then something just kept saying, no, you his mama. That could be yeah, God talking so. to you so, and telling you that. So when you and I and I I, I got to go back to to that night when you, when you, when this happens, you're where? I'm asleep. At how far is your house from there? It was 26 miles, I think it was. 26 miles. So you are at home sleep. Who calls you? How do you get informed that little Snoop has been shot or murdered or how was it told to you? Uh, there was a neighbor. Her daughter had was in the town that it happened in, and she had a, um, what do you call it, scanner. Okay. And I think the vehicle, she had seen Snoop in the vehicle earlier, and that scanner was mentioned that vehicle. Mm. Her mom came and was beating on the door. And I'm What thinking, time was this? It was at 4. In the morning. In the morning. I thought that it was Snoop because of the way she beat. That's the mm -hmm. way he beats. Yeah. So I didn't think nothing, but, like, let me just unlock this door for him at okay. this point, right? And, um... I could just hear, I said, who is it? And she was like, you got to come quick. It's a bad call. Um, they done killed your baby. Oh, she told mm. you. What did you just broke down? I opened a door. She probably disbelief. Yeah, I opened a door. But you know you, you know how when you hear something, you can't comprehend it? Yeah. yeah. So I didn't have no clothes on. And I'm just like, I need to put some clothes on. And my clothes were in my face. But I couldn't register that there was clothes in my face. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while to grab that together. And I'm like, okay, now I need to drive here, right? And because at the time Snoop was always in my car, 
I'm gonna let y'all know I'm real petty. Like I'm not gonna put gas in here for you. So since you driving it, then I'm gonna keep it on E. Yeah. Right. And so my car was on E. Mm. So I had to get in my car. Um, at the time, I was in a relationship with someone that was there. He was like, "You don't need to drive," you know. But I'm like, "If you're not gonna do a hundred, then I'm gonna drive." Right. So I had to stop and pump gas first, and then whatever reason I called Meek's manager um, at the time. I don't even know. I can't even, like, even now I'll be like, why did I call him of all people? Like, I got a mom, I got a, you know, this, and I just called him, and he called me on three-way. So I'm still thinking it's a lie because that small town, my phone should have been blowing up. Somebody should have been calling, saying something. It was quiet the whole way there. But they didn't know yet because she heard it on a scanner. So yeah, they know but people it don't, they, takes five seconds. It's every, it was so many people out there, there's no way. Yeah. I think people just didn't want to call me, maybe, because mm. there's no way Nobody knew by the time I got there. Right. Um, so and you I, went to the scene? Oh, yeah, I was there. Yeah, and he was go. still there. He was on the ground. The sheet wasn't on him yet. I remember. So you saw all of that. Um, I jumped out the car. And so crazy is my car. So let's go. Okay, I jumped out the car. I seen him there. And I was trying to get to him. But the police was like, I can't come because, I mean, I can't get by him because it's a crime scene. Right. Right. But I'm throwing up and I'm trying to get to him at the same time so I'm fighting them and I just remember they the coroner finally came they put the sheet on him and they took him to the funeral home and then I went to the funeral home and as I walked in there there was a bathroom like like a school bathroom mm -hmm. right and I remember just sitting there and I prayed <sighs> yeah here so I prayed and when I prayed, I got up, and I just remember um, there was a lady, well, you know, the funeral home person, the lady, and she was there. And so she was holding on to me, and she said, um, you know, before you go over here, and she was talking, but I could see Snoop a little bit in the body bag, kind of in my vision as she's talking to me. And she was saying how she had a son and blah, blah, and I said, ma'am, I said, is your son dead? She said, no. I said, well, get your hands off me. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that. Cause that's the, so, that, you see, that's the reason why I always say sometimes God put us through things to help other people because people don't listen to nobody who hasn't been through what mm -hmm. they've been through mm -hmm. for the exact reason that you just said a while ago. Because there's so many people, I can, I can empathize. I mean, I can understand. I can feel it through what you say. Mm -hmm. And I use what you say to help somebody else, but they can still look at me like, well, you haven't lost yours. Exactly. You see what I mean? Yeah, so, so I had to walk to his body bag by myself. They wouldn't let nobody else in there. And I had to walk to his body bag by myself. So that's why I said a lot of these things that I've been on this journey, like nothing can move me because I've done the unthinkable. That day, that night, God, you that know? morning while his body bag was out there, that's when you went and looked at him? Mm hmm Cause you know how well, when you watch you, movies, they 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 wait till it goes well, to see, the coroner or whatever, and then you go view the body at that time. But see, this is a small town, so he was already at the funeral home. There was no sense of going to the hospital. You're dead. He was dead right. mm -hmm. when I got there, right? So there, what are we going to the hospital for? Yeah, I mean, to the funeral home yeah. and look at the. He went straight to the funeral home, and so that's where mm -hmm. I pulled up at. At the funeral home and at see the, the funeral okay. home. Okay, I wasn't sure if you saw him like at the where he got shot like th they said okay come the look crime at the body scene first yeah he was on the okay. ground first in she the seen grass him there then, at that time so you already then he, they put the sheet on him for a while so then, you sat there and you waited there yeah home. i waited until they took him and so i got behind the corner and then they took him inside and i just like i said he didn't even have much blood on him see that's the thing when snoop got shot he bled on the inside oh he didn't even, he mm. had on a white t-shirt and some um ash gray pants and there was hardly no blood on him um the t-shirt was off i want to say but and then the, the hole, there was a bullet hole right on the top of his nipple. And it was so small, like a dime or something. Um, and that's what I'm saying. That that right there, I try not to even think about that too much because I can't believe I survived that. That's what I'm saying. What I would know. be going through your mind at this time? Because that's a place where you, you think about it. You have to go. You, you, you driving or somebody else driving at this point? Um, I rode with someone because, oh, yeah. that's the thing. When I got ready to get in my car to follow him, my tire was off. What? It so, came off? So my car was sitting on the rim. The passenger side tire was on a rim. The tire was completely gone. I never felt a bump or anything on my So, hold tire. on. So wow. you drove that car like that? 
to the, it, the it had to happen in, in the in the transition right trans- and you just, she you couldn't just, think about it and it, we didn't feel it it took you the whole That's, time yeah we God didn't feel it there, man. so who took you to the um to the funeral home his cousin who truck it was um him and a girl he was talking to at the time they gave me a ride to the funeral home mm. yeah wow. and so i just remember you know just telling snoop like get up yeah and you're not dead you're playing get up how long did it take you to come to re- realization that this is real? About three years. How long did you, how long did you stay in there with him? Do you? I don't remember. You um, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. I just know because it was so crazy. Because I remember his cousin asking him, like, "Y'all really gonna let her make her go in there like this by herself?" And um, I took my time. You know, I did take my time, and I left. I had a good friend, actually, the same friend who. Stop traffic so Snoop would get his CD to meet. She was she had pulled up. Mm. She asked me where I was. She came straight, and that's who I rode with. You know, from the funeral home to the police station. I mm. left the funeral home, went to the police mm. station. His killer, the guy that was there, he was standing outside at the time. So that outside lets the you, police station, correct? That lets you know they didn't interview him long enough. Somebody's dead, and you standing outside waiting on your ride the morning of. Like this had to be about seven at this time. Wow. Yeah. So what? Okay, so. They didn't arrest him at that, but not that, day. not that day. Not that day. He basically walked away that day. Yeah, he did. Um, based on the um the transcript of the the interview, it was a five minute interview that day. Wow. And so now you get to the police station. What do, what do they say to you? What what are they saying? I don't remember details. Of they the don't day. really. They, they ain't talk. You know, they don't really. They ain't know. Cause how is the Louisiana justice system? Man, Let's be real. I would just tell anybody stay out of Louisiana. If you plan on getting in trouble, that's not the place. Um, what I my, I think my frustration comes from the police, um, the chief telling me like, trying to assure me he's gonna do the best he can do. Mm. I think that's the first because you sat in my face, and I think the worst thing anybody can do to Denisha is play on my intelligence. Right. And so you know he was I'm gonna dot my T's, cross my eyes, make this and that. So when results start happening, I was on him like you you, you know lied. you lied to me. Even to this day, I don't even look at him because. You, this was my son's life. Like y'all play with this, and then the thing about it was, he wasn't even relevant when we were going to court. When the guy did get the time, I made him relevant. I, I did a wow. video and made them play his video because this wasn't no drug deal gone bad situation. And I think that's what they tried to paint the narrative because mm-hmm. the police um told me he said no. The district attorney said, well, you know your son had marijuana and pimentazine in his system. I said, did that kill him? Mm. He said no. I said, well, don't mention that to me. Wow. Right. That's crazy. Before this happened, uh, what when was the last time that you spoke to Snoop before that? that um, well, that, and what was that conversation like? Let me tell you. Huh? So that day, um, he brought my car to me Wednesday. So keep in mind, he got killed at four o eight a.m. on Thursday morning, mm-hmm. and so Wednesday about noon, he brought me my car. That's how he ended up in the cousin's vehicle because I needed to use my car for something. And we sat in the yard for about 30 minutes hugging, looking up in the sky. Wow. And Snoop told, we were just talking, and I don't remember the details, but what stuck out to me was he said, Mama, you're going to go. He said, and you're going to spend thousands of dollars. He said, and people are going to change on you, Mama. He's preparing you. And And that's what he said. He told me, he said, it's not the people... With the money that's gonna change, it's gonna be the people yeah, without the, the money, money that's gonna change. And, he's gonna and the be reason your why that hurt is because that was so true. It happened. And it happened. And so we talked and talked and talked. And um, he took my charger, and then I called him again. No, okay. So then, because I was supposed to go find like a double, he wanted to buy a mobile home just to have. He said we gonna buy this mobile home and buy some land. So whenever we want to come back to Louisiana, we have somewhere to stay. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he told me to go shopping for one. I said, what's the budget? He said, about 50000 I said, okay. So I go and I find a nice one, like mm-hmm. sixty nine. you know. And by the time you do this and that, they was going to knock off. So it was going to be pretty good. So I called him on my way back. That had to be about three. Um, and he said, mama, I don't know what type of trailer you went and looked at. He said, <laughs> he said my grandmother didn't pay that much for her. She paid about seven to 10000 He said, that's what we need to do. And then we just going to put about 50000 worth of work into it. Mm-hmm. And I said, what? I said, boy, you know what? You go look for what you want to because that just didn't make sense to yeah. me. And we hung up, and then I called him again about seven thirty because he was getting ready to go on a trip and meet up with Meek Neal. Okay. And so I let him know, 
you don't have to buy your hygiene stuff. I already got it. Yeah. But when I called him, the killer answered. Okay. And he said Snoop wanted him to answer to see what I wanted. And I said, he said he's playing the game. So I know if you're playing the game, you're gambling. So I said, okay, well, just tell him to call me back. And, and then that, 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 that was it. What? Well, I, I want to ask about Meek. If he's talking about buying things and doing things, had he even signed a deal already and the money and everything was starting to come through or had y'all even got that far? He had signed his deal, but he hadn't gotten his deal money. And what's so crazy is like after this, like Snoop was, they first sent the deal in January, but Snoop was like, this is not right. You know, this is the thing about with him. Was, and that's why I said, if this wasn't my son, I'd just be like, this boy was a smart kid, right? Yeah. Because yeah. You, you've been wanting to be a rapper your whole life and you have a deal in front of you like, nah, I ain't doing it. Wow. And so that gave him time for the world to get to know him more and more. So then other deals started coming to the table. Okay. And the who realist, all, who all, what, uh, who all, well, how many deals? I didn't out. know that. Well, I know Universal Records Universal, wanted him. Okay. Um, I don't know as far as like any other entertainers. Okay. Um, but that's B. For sure. Exactly. But the thing that was and so you had real. to study up on all this stuff because you didn't know nothing about this industry and I started learning after <laughs> because I had no choice this was sat in my lap so I had to get educated because right. this was new right but Meek kept it so real with Snoop even though Meek introduced the world to Snoop I mean the you know he told Snoop to go with the better deal yeah mm. but Snoop was like nah you know out of loyalty I'm gonna go ahead and sign so he said mom I'm gonna give him two years of my life then I'm going to start doing my own thing. He said, when I'm 25, we're going to retire. My daddy going to be home and we just going to live. Wow. That's what he told me. Wow. Did you ever contact his dad to let him know what happened? Or did anybody? I did. I called because um, I was trying to get him to the funeral. And they wouldn't let him and come And the out. coroner told me that I should be embarrassed to even want someone like him at my son's funeral. Wow. And I said, well, that's his child, too. So right. he was on lockdown for something. But no, he wasn't able to come to the funeral. But wow. I did try to get. So you, you know, called him and told him what? What was his response? I don't really remember because I was so messed up. I don't remember. He wrote a letter though, um, and they read it at the funeral. But I can't remember what his response is. All I know is that we have never had the conversation to this, to day, this day. What happened to him? What happened in court? We've never had those conversations. He's never asked me my version of how our child died. It's all been whatever the street said. Wow. Mm. Well, I did. Did Snoop, did little Snoop ever, did he have, did he know Mo3 or did he ever? I mean, he, I found out that he did. I didn't know yeah. Mo3, but Mo3 told me that him and Snoop, you know. Mo3 told you that? Yes, he did. Where were y'all at when Mo3? We were at an event, um, a violence, Stop the Violence event with the wow. Urban Specialist. Wow, shout out yeah. to Corey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they and had. Um, Bishop Omar. Yeah, Bishop Omar and to, um, with, uh, they call him kiddo, but Bruce Wayne. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Mo3 told me there he was at that event and that's when he shared his memories of Snoop with me. Wow. Mm -hmm. What and what did he what did he say he liked about his music? I don't even think music was on it. Wasn't on even they, that. Yeah, on they they was just doing just them. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, them <laughs> ain't no telling. Yeah, ain't no telling with them two, right? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I don't think music was ever. But even though, because I remember Skip Cheatham, was it K one oh four back in the day? Yeah, Skip okay. Cheatham. He came on Whitehurst in a van and Snoop really? freestyled for him before. Really? Wow. Yeah. He did. So he 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 definitely. He kind of been doing and actually there's another group here. I can't think of their name. They used to let Snoop come to the studio with them. But if he messed up in school, I wouldn't let him go. So they, you know, yeah. he was younger then, probably like 11, 12, right. something like that. Yeah. Man. So I, I, I know that's just crazy, man. Um, just to uh, have to go through what you went through that time. You know what I mean? Uh, during that time up until the day. You know what I mean? So when I look at. Cause I've been watching everything that's been going on too, um, and I posted something the other day. Um, <clears throat> it was a deal where y'all had did a a, a mother, uh, I guess because all y'all had had. I had gotten that call too. We was going mm -hmm. to Houston, and they wanted y'all to come on Boss Talk then. Okay. And I was going out of town, but it was you and Mama Duck and all of y'all. Y'all was on the show. Y'all was sitting on the panel, mm -hmm. and I thought that was live. I. I was like, man, that's good that all yeah. of y'all came together. Really How was, was that experience just coming together with those mothers? Because I know you've been doing this. Right. And you, you're you running into mothers who's just now facing this. Right. Mm -hmm. So how electrifying is that to be able to feel like, hey, there is a purpose in me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was definitely a praise break in that because I was able to see my old self through them. Yeah. Like where I was at at that moment because I am 
at a space now that I never thought I could be at with my situation. So that's wow. why I know God is just so real. But I was reliving seeing them in just like I said, even with um, Dominique is Tuka's mom. Her voice was that rattle that I was telling you guys yeah, about yeah, when I yeah. first started mm -hmm. speaking. And so I was just like, man, I've came so far. Or that's, yeah, that's that was I, her first you, time even speaking out. Correct. Wasn't it? So yes. how how was it just even the conversation? And I'm sorry, yeah. with you and her. Um, that's what that's what I was gonna I was gonna say. How were you able to get through to some of these people who are going through something that you already been through? Yeah, I just want to talk about. I want to stay on. Yeah, I'm talking head. about her yeah. still. Yeah, I just um, I'm just authentic. Like I be myself, right? And my testimony speaks for itself. So I just share what works for me. Mm -hmm. I don't try to tell nobody what you should do because every journey is going to be different, but I let them know what works for me. So with Tuka Mama, by this being her first time, she was real nervous, and you know you could tell. But she also was just so tired that her son's name was being abused the way it was. So you could you could feel her pain. You could feel her pain at that event. And I was just so proud that she made it through it because, mm -hmm. you know, that was her first time. And so when you got cameras in your face, it's a nervousness going to come every single time. time yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single time. I don't care how many times I can times tell you when speak. you sit down right here the <laughs> way you are now versus when you first sat there. Yeah. I can tell all that. It's just because it's like I got to speak about my dead son. Yeah. And, 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 that, and I'm swallowing. Yeah, you know, S so that's the thing. Smoking on Tuca is what they were saying. They I, that's what that went all over this whole United States. Nigga. Everybody would, was was playing on that. And because I was in my own world in my zone, because you got to keep in mind, I stopped watching TV. I stopped doing a lot of things. I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel you. Yeah, I didn't know nothing about who. I don't. I still not really educated how the beef works. But what I would say about it, you know that type of culture. What I'm learning, because I have a friend that, you know, now we're friends and she's from Chicago. That made me want to tap into their culture, like what's going on. And what I can say is you really can't blame those children for becoming how they became because you either, from what I have observed, is you either going to get in a gang to survive in your neighborhood where you have no choice but where you live. You, Your mom have you living here, right? You got to mm -hmm, do live where mm -hmm. your parent live. And you either going to protect yourself and get involved with a family to protect you or you're going to get bullied. And yeah. that's not fair, but that's just kind of what I can observe that was happening, you know, with them. So my heart just goes out to, to them as well, because I know you have to just be so strong to try to survive in an atmosphere. Like do you that. think that that meeting you guys had, did it do what you felt it should have done? I do. For us, you know, like the, the, for you guys to come together like y'all did. I do. And, and because, because, you got to understand, like, I never knew what a murderer thought. Mm. And we had men on the panel that had committed murder, murder and had did prison time for it. And so to hear them speak and give their life, even though I'm a victim, I had sympathy for them. What was wow. the most touching story that you heard that day that really opened your eyes? I think the ending... There was a mother, she brought her baby in a box, his ashes. And she spoke about accountability with the parents. And I thought that was so real and authentic because a lot of us don't accept responsibility for our actions. Like when I spoke about my son being disrespectful it's because he's seen it. I'm, you know, holding myself accountable for how I was. Most people be lacking like they don't know why they can't do what wow. they do. So right. she sat there and, and she presented that while holding her baby. And that just that, was, that just gave me so much. She gave me motivation. Wow. But I'm curious to know what did the killers say that opened your eyes towards what or gave them sympathy? What was that thing that they, they told said? their childhood uh, stories of things they kind of endured? So it's like, you know, they had a hard life. And so they made decisions they probably wasn't happy for. But. It was just kind of still, I think everybody was just in survival mode at the same time. So mm -hmm. I don't think that they, like, I'm going to be a killer. Something happened and it happened. But the fact that they can have remorse and want to change their life and speak on it, that was a plus. Because we had black men on the panel that were speaking positive about something and they used to be something else. You know, saying one guy said he went from insane to sane. He don't even want to be called insane no more. And that was just letting me know, like, you learned something. You didn't just go to jail and try to get stripes off being a murderer. You allowed that situation to help someone else, and I think we all touched each other on that panel. Uh, Have you forgiven him 
for what he did to Snow's your son? Killer? I have forgive him. Um, I don't even question. think about him. Like I, I, I really see God for for that. I say, God, I need you to fix to where he, I never know he ever existed, and unless his name is brought up, I don't have one thought. Um, some you know, Snoop fans keep me up the game on everything. So he had a baby. They told me he named his son after Snoop. Um, he became a rap. He wanted to be a rapper. So then I think he named one of his uh, the cover said talking to Snoop. So he's been very picky, but I still. You know, I tell him, you know, I gave you life when you took life from me because I died when Snoop died as well. But I don't have an ill thought because one thing God has proven to me, he do not play about me in the vengeance is his. He has proven that to me. So I don't have to worry about what goes on. I'm just have my ear open because this is a thing I had to check myself. I cannot say I'm a woman of God and moving God spirit and when i'm talking to people i'm talking about god and then contradict and say i hate my son's killer mm. i'm being fake for that That's right. so the question i had to ask myself and it hurts so bad and i had to cry 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 if snoop killer comes to me and says i'm sorry will you forgive will me? you forgive me can you know will you teach me how to be a better person you know me being so obedient to god i would have to do that no matter how, what my flesh is telling me, unless I'm in flesh that, you know, at that time, because you got to be <laughs> right. real with yourself. Right. If I'm in flesh, but being a woman of God, I have to do and be obedient. So some people may look at it like she crazy. No, I'm being obedient because I know I'm on a journey and I have a purpose. Just like I think, what was it, Botham? I was just Jean, about, I was just about I was about at to, work I was and I had it on here. And I know my supervisor probably was like, we finna fire her because I was, I watched the whole case. And a lot of people was angry with his brother for that. But my heart filled and I cried. Mm -hmm. I was just so happy. And I had to go in the bathroom and shout because that shows you how real God is. And I'm happy you said that because I've always said, because I've never known anybody who actually got touched by it. But you know how when you watch it, you know that people got touched by mm -hmm. that. So many people probably had hatred towards somebody that killed somebody close to them and forgave that person right then and there because of that. But the people who are in the flesh would not understand that. They mm -hmm. look at him and say, you crazy? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? You need to kill her. You need to this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. But people who are in the spirit and really know how to accept God and because of the things that they've been going through in their life and having that battle, that was somebody's breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Man, now I, I got to ask you about uh, the elephant in the room, the thing that you've been going, you know, you was on school to Shout out to Chris Go uh, uh, last night. Um, I, I really didn't get into it because I like to do my own thing, you know. But there was a lot, there's been a lot of stuff going on with that whole situation y'all done. A lot of <clears throat> a lot of back and forth. But on that event when you guys came down here, who financed that event? Well, I live in Dallas, so I didn't get. Okay, food. so there were some more people that came in. Okay, yeah. But um, what, uh, the only people that were flew in were uh, the ones from yeah from Chicago and right, all so other places. That's it. Okay. We didn't get uh, flown in. We didn't, you know, have to go through that and get a hotel room under that thing. So we were okay. already me and some of y'all was me already here. Which it was only four of us. So okay. it was me and my three mom were, were here. Yeah. So we didn't have to get flown in. So um, I think, like I said, I think it was a team effort. I I don't know details as far as like who paid for what, who paid okay. for what. I know that it was a team effort. I do know that um, when I decided to be a part of it, it was just the kindness of my heart. I wasn't okay charging to yeah, be a part yeah. of that panel because like I said it was familiar to me mm -hmm. I've been doing this and if if I can get like I said I'm, I want to reach one teach one I'm on, I'm for that so I pick and choose how I move and yeah we didn't have to uh get none of that I was us. I was given a price when you, when I was going to Houston mm -hmm. of how you know this is by certain people Mm -hmm. That this is what's gonna have it's gonna take, and I'm like, but I'm going to Houston, man. Anyway, I say, man, that's a big deal, and I think it's it's commendable, but mm -hmm. I I won't be able to play part to it because I already had prior plan, right. and it was something that they called you right when it had when it was right at the door of having. See, we I don't have no knowledge of no interviews. Really? I wasn't asked to do an interview. Really? No. Yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, uh, they were shopping, they were shopping around you around to a lot of different podcasts to try to get and your name on. was named. I can promise. I didn't yeah. do one interview that weekend. Really? No. Wow. So that just somebody just trying to use your name. I guess so, because I didn't do one interview that weekend. Mm. Wow. So when you when you look at like when I posted the other day, uh, Charleston White, he said, "Elf uh, Snoop's mom, Elf Snoop." 
you know, uh, nobody want to think about that nigga, and she all she want is some money. How does that? I mean, how does that? How how does it turn from that? You guys doing that event together and sitting on the same panel mm -hmm. to that place. But how did you hear about it? Because you are not really on social media or anything like that. How did you hear that he said that the first time? Well, I mean, I am on social media, but I I didn't hear that. I want to see the thing about my circle is they already know don't bring me certain stuff. Yeah. So we already had we done been through that. So I think I heard about it. The kind of things. Only thing I think I've heard he said was like "f me, f her," um, Snoop, and something about some money that he gave us money. Up yeah, or like he yeah, takes they care gave of us or some something. Money. Yeah, he took care of all you bitches. Yeah, um, and all that's this not other. True. I mean, so I'm just trying to figure out how does it get there and why. What is the where is the anger coming from to even be mad about that? Well, one thing about it, he's a mental patient. Um, <laughs> that's the first thing, but it's be I, it's because I made decisions say I don't want to work. Be like, not work because there's really was no work. We did an event. I didn't want m me or my son's name attached to him because of what he was doing. See, I learned about him later. Like I said, when when I agreed to work with him, that's the person that's on the internet. That's not the person I spoke with. That's not the person I had a conversation with. So I didn't know, you know. But at the end of the day, I see what you're doing. So. I don't get excluded from that. You see what I'm saying? So it don't move me for him to say he has to join a club, a whole big band of people that's going to say F me. Like he got to really be, he's a part of a choir at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't move me that he said that. But what what, what does, uh, it's disappointing is that you act like you were for us and for the movement. Um, and if I say, hey, you know, you acting up and I don't want to be a part of you and you get mad at me and now I'm a you know female dog, then that lets me know about your character. You see what I'm saying? Like, I didn't do anything to you. You didn't do anything to me. You just doing too much other stuff, and I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah, right. That's yeah. the only thing. And so when I shared that with him face-to-face -face two weeks ago, there was not a problem. Okay. You know, he told me, I got a million-dollar deal, blah, blah. He, he was told like, you had a million-dollar deal? That's what he told me. And he was like, he's not... Um, Working with the with the event stuff no more. He was like, "F that stuff. I'm not working with." So he's not because he had a deal with called hype about hype where he so called deal with the children and all kind of stuff. He said he not with that no more or, well, or with, with 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 the, just helping the moms. He said he wasn't a part of the murder change me event. He wasn't messing with that no more. Is oh what yeah, he said. and he said he got a million dollar deal. He's like, I got a million dollar deal. I ain't I ain't, I ain't talked to nobody. I don't know nothing. And I was like, okay, well. How can I get my footage of it so I can use it for something that I'm doing? And our conversation, it's so crazy because two weeks ago, this man just gave me a hug. Wow. And just said, hey, mama, you know, and I was like, hey, how you being? So, but I had not talked to him since a couple of days after the event. So that was, what, July something or, you know, right up in the end of June or July. And here we are in October. I mean, I hadn't even talked to him. So I, I was confused. Because I, I don't understand how it can go from I no longer. No, this is the thing. He was doing videos saying he was still working with me. Really? But he was saying us. But at the end of the day, I can't speak for what another mother w wants. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to stop saying that you work. And then he said, yeah, we going to North Carolina. And we but it's all offline. If you catch what? it, it has to be offline because that way nobody would think that you're lying because there's no footage to show. Right. Mm -hmm. So he can get away with that. Mm -hmm. if, and so I gave him the chance to clear it up and himself all he had to do was just let me share that with you and stop but you did another interview after that and said you still working with us now i have to say something because you confusing yeah and you're lying so, so yeah so that's all i did all i did was say hey i don't want to work you know i don't want you to keep saying you're working with me and then hell broke loose from there yeah because i'm trying to understand why would it be f snoop you don't even f know snoop U f u f snoop I'm just trying to see how, where that comes from. It's just, that's what he does. I mean, if you look, I started watching a couple of things after people started saying, you seen what Charleston said? Because at the end of the day, if I'm attached to you, I need to know what's going yeah, on. Cause yeah. You know, that's just how I am. But I didn't understand it. Like, I didn't I didn't do anything to him. He has he has hadn't done anything to me until then. And even now, I don't feel like he's done anything to me because talk is cheap. And he didn't know my son. And, and was the thing about it is when he met me, he told me that I was the next Miss Afeni. He loved my spirit. Um, I'm what the mothers needed. And he got familiar with Snoop after that, right? Um, he started telling me, everywhere I go, if I mention your son, oh, they love him. So for you to say F him, that's just let you know it's entertainment. Like, 
he's in character. They keep trying to blame this character. But what the thing about it is, what I've seen the other day when I'm seeing him, he's in character off the camera now. Wow. So that's the dangerous part about it. Like, you, whoever the character is on camera, he's now that person. Because his whole demeanor and everything was different from the Charleston that I knew. Wow. Man, just in a two in a two week span. Yeah, I think like I said, um, yeah, I guess two weeks. Because it was two weeks when I seen him. I ran into him and he gave me a hug and I just shared with him then, like, hey, I seen you did a video where you were saying you working with us. I was like, I don't want you to be saying that. And he was like, Oh no, I don't need that shit. I got this, this, and this. So wow. I'm thinking we so got an understanding. Yeah. I'm thinking it's okay. So then you did another interview and said that you're working with us so i feel like you know saying that you're doing something positive with the mother was his last crutch of positivity because wow i don't see anything else positive that he's doing and even if you have a positive resume before your one thing today can mess up the whole resume wow you see Explain what i'm saying that. go deep into detail because when i say that it's like if you were known for being a community man and, and doing these positive things you if you're not continuing it, then that's just who you were at that time. That's the person he was then. He's not displaying that those actions now. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I don't want to be a part of it, and I'm not. So, really, all this done, of course, other people are like, whoa, he said this, whoa. I don't feel no kind of way, because guess why? My mission has been accomplished. Man. Everybody know one thing. I'm not rocking with him. Man. And that's all I wanted from the beginning. Was yeah. just, And it, it could have been off air, offline between me and him. He brought it here, so now we're here. Was it some of the things? Some of the things you've seen actually end up running back into. It's just that I mean, like you, 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 you doing too much. So to is say, it contradictory? I think so too. But just like his, whatever he's doing online, I, I'm not gonna let myself comprehend he's in character. Hell no, I'm not gonna sit here and play them type of mind games with myself. So that's just who you are, and he's disrespectful, and so I'm not gonna be a part of that. Yeah, because did you know about the the fact that he said talked about rape before you had did that interview? I, and stuff? No, I didn't. I really just got the full story yesterday of what he said, but I've mm. never seen the video of him saying it. Really? But I remember when they posted about us being with him, when someone in the comments said, are these ladies okay? Because you know he liked to touch and take stuff. And I looked, and I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that brought, then it made me kind of wonder. Started looking and yeah, wondering what's going on. Yep. So... I didn't know. There's an old tape that keep resurfacing. It's a lot of them. Not nobody said it, but it's something that he said. Mm -hmm. And it keeps coming up. Every time you look around, anytime he tries to do something or move forward, that that rape and this that mm -hmm. talk, the things that he said is the things that come back on him. I got a question. Why do people keep posting and talking about him? Don't they know if they would just not show him no attention, it won't work? Like, he'll have to stop because you got to keep in mind what I learned within this last week is that he is doing this on GP. He really care about views and likes, mm -hmm. and you're not getting even a check. So I was really trying to, like, give him a little credit. Like, okay, well, maybe you just using this little money, pay, take care of your family. You know, that's why you go to the extreme because it's getting your likes up. You're not even getting a check for this. So now that's where the mental problem come in to me. Yeah. But I just feel like if people stop feeding into any negative, not just him, but anything that's negative, stop feeding into it. But because people love that, this this is where we are. Yeah. But I'm not I don't want to be known for drama. I'm not known for drama. Like I'll set the record straight because I'm gonna hold it down for me and my son. Other than that, I ain't here to tongue wrestle with that man. Um he's my elder and I do respect my elders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> at the end of the day. So I don't care what he said about me because he hasn't taken care of me and what he eat don't make me shit. Wow. And that's that. On that's that. real. So, and, and, and really, like you said earlier to show that detachment, cause we, we had brought him on the show over, almost a year ago now and we detached ourselves. So what you already facing, we already really? seen that. And it's mm -hmm. the thing, you know, I believe he had like a, a weed strand or something he has nothing to promote because from my understanding, he has fell out with every single yeah. person. And that should, something should check in him and say, hey, am I, I have to be the problem. When I was an ugly person, eventually I had to recognize it was me and make yeah. some changes. So if you got a pattern of falling out with everybody, I'm just another one on the hit list. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is my season for him. Then it'll be someone else someone because else. he's who he is. Exactly. And even with there was a council lady, I believe they said that wanted us in North Carolina. I'm understanding he cussed her out, you wow. know. And really? I'm like, that's why the, the North Carolina thing, it, it was so disrespectful because even though we were informed we were supposed to go to North Carolina, we were never informed that we were not going to go. Wow. 
And it's like he messed it up for all y'all. Well, no, he did not. He has he didn't because no, he did not because you gotta understand. So because is, he wasn't representing y'all at that time. No, because I mean this is the thing. Just like you invited me here, mm -hmm. I was invited to that event and I said yes. Okay. I don't have a management team. I am my manager. I'm a boss. Okay. I'm on boss talk. Hey. Real boss. <laughs> boss talk one on one where the you know? bosses talk. Okay. I'm a real boss, so I don't have a representative for me. Then there's nobody telling me do or don't. He's not. I don't need him to talk for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I need to be his manager. So right. then he wouldn't be on here acting so crazy. So you would you would never work with this guy again? Ever. I'm not working with him. And then this event is not his event, so we're going to still move forward. And okay. he's just out of it. Okay, so he basically, how did he end up even linking into it? Yeah. Because we were, this is the thing. We were on, a, I was on the phone with his um, publicist at the time. She's no longer his publicist, from my understanding. And... Me and her were just having conversations because we grew a relationship and how me and you are talking. I was telling her and we were just brainstorming about stuff. And I was like, you know, a murder changed me because she lost someone to murder. And I said, murder changed me can go across the board to victims and people that actually kill people. I said, so many people are affected by murder. So murder changes more than just a parent. And she was like, you know what, that's good, something, something. So we did a conference call and we called him and we were talking about it. And within the next week or two, I start seeing, she started having conversations. She was like, yeah, yeah, something, because murder changed me. I'm like, what is that? And she said, uh. She took well, we what gonna, you said. We gonna, she shared that with him, but he took it and created this, I guess, so event. I guess he just had a conversation, right? And so it's a good idea. And I was even saying, I was like, and you know what? We can probably use, um, like, change up the pattern. You know how the MCM purses or whatever? Yeah, like yeah, that. And yeah, he was like, yeah. oh, yeah, we can get a deal with them. We could do this. So everything was that. <laughs> oh, so and, it's about money. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I'm learning that. In the, in, in, but in the beginning, that's not how it was presented, right? And so it was just something of like, get it together. And I seen the flyer. And so I'm like, okay, I see what's going on. And like I said, it because it was so familiar to me, I'm for that kind of stuff. Like I really am. Now what he has taught me is to be careful who I get connected with. But when it comes down to healing, I'm for it because I'm a prime example that it's possible. In the beginning, did you see any signs? Because you know, you know, they always say we have a spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. Did you see any signs from him? I did not because you got to understand the conversation. He's very intelligent, so the conversation we had was never anything toxic, ever toxic. Like I didn't see anything when it came down to business. Like he's a businessman; he owned everything. And then he told me that he mentioned God and he used God for that. He told me that he had killed someone and he felt like this was his opportunity for redemption. So I'm like, I'm, I'm amazed and inspired by his story because you are actually, you know, a killer too. This is before we met the other guys, mm -hmm, the panel people. Mm -hmm. and I'm just meeting you like, dang, you are, and you done changed your life around and you want to, you know, anybody that's tuned in to God, that's a praise break when mm -hmm. you can change your life around. So that's what connected me with the whole situation. Yeah, well, when you look at the track record and the people that's been on this show, they say that he didn't even do the it wasn't him that murdered anyway I, I so it's it, like see, like when you, you hear these stories it <laughs> sounds good but the, the, you know like i quoted earlier you know there there's a deal where you know even even satan himself is transformed into an angel mm -hmm. of light right so you even, know that you know like people can change you know uh uh wolves come in and she's she uh -huh. uh -huh. so people are turning on you in a minute exactly. and i'm I, and that's just the way it is you know and and like i said i always wished him the best with whatever he do but i just know that as you you should be happy because you're not attached anymore exactly and even now like i'm not i don't have an ill will feeling like no I me neither yeah, like, I, don't, like, I don't even care enough to know like, I don't want to know his history. I'm not going to go search him and find out his old stuff. Well, you didn't go through I, enough yeah. with him. That you don't yeah, even know that's him. Like, I don't even know you a couple of few little minutes. And then, and so this, I just want people, because people have been, you know, I can tell the difference in folks. They kind of quiet. They want to reach out, but they don't know how I'm feeling. They think I'm messed up. I'm like, <laughs> you know I'm about good. That. You know, so it's kind of like, we're going to hush because we're going to wait to see. You You know, I'm getting text messages, calls, you know, just checking on you. I am good. I am in a good space. I mean, because like I stated, Snoop's dad just did the same identical thing last really? year towards me. Yeah, he was upset. What did he do? He went on social media doing the same YouTube. Um, so you got talking about you me. Got Snoop killed. Because he's out, all. right? Yes, he's out now. Okay. So, so he, how did how did what did he say? Well, he said a lot of stuff. He was about, talking about he, he thinking the fact that you didn't. He was talking about me. He was saying that Meek owe him. Um, he called out Meek. He called. He were naming people that was not even relevant to my son's deal. Like he was just naming artists, just trying to get that clout. Clout fiend is real. 
So didn't, well, didn't do nothing. But he being locked up for 21 years and not even knowing social media, because, you know, when you're gone for a long time and then everything changed. They can get on social media. Let's not do that. You know, oh, they yeah. can get they on can social get on media anything. in jail. They yes. seen, they seen it. <laughs> He's seen because it. Because we have a lot of people who come on here and be like, I don't even know how to handle this phone. Oh, no. I mean, I can say but probably with a phone, but he was able to kind of keep up with what was going okay. on. So he was under attack. So you got to understand, I experienced cyberbullying within six months of Snoop Diff. So this is not new for me. So it didn't catch me off guard. And I'm just thankful that I am disciplined enough not to, you know, even respond in a manner or no, it ain't even about responding because I don't owe anybody. So you didn't respond to him at all. I'm here to speak on the little bit of it before it's like attacking him or trying no, to go back. No, yeah, no, I'm yeah. talking like on social media. You didn't go back. Husband? And, no, I'm talking about your husband. No, yeah, yeah, your, I mean, your, his father. Yeah, his father. Ooh, when girl, he did yeah. that. His husband, right? Like, whoa, like, I said husband. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we ain't going to rebuke that spirit. You don't rebuke that spirit. But, but, yeah, yeah, no, did. but you didn't respond to him online when he um, went and did his thing? I made one video, a live okay. video, and I just basically, you know, cleared up. And then once I spoke... His action showed that what I was saying was real. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, you know, uh, is there, going back to uh, little Snoop, if there was, is there one thing, anything that share something with me that nobody wouldn't have knew that he? <laughs> it can be positive. It don't have to be. Nobody would know that this thing, you know, was uh, was a little Snoop thing. What do you mean? Like, what's your question? Yeah, like, like something that the people wouldn't, nobody would like know. Something he likes to do. Something like he likes something to do. He, something that he, you, you know, he would do that or nobody something he normally would, even would say know. to you that you hold there that nobody knows. Let me tell y'all about it. <laughs> <laughs> give me a story, right? I'm just gonna give y'all a story how how he just could tell me anything, right? Yeah. Okay. So he was influenced to start drinking uh, syrup. Okay. Whatever, right. <laughs> so he called me. Mom, I need to go to the doctor. I said, what's wrong with you? He's like, I'm sick. I got a cold. I said, well, we could go to Walmart and get you something. No, no, I'm going to need to go to a doctor. So whoever had educated him knew what doctor him to go to and everything. <laughs> but I'm just like, let's go. So we go to the doctor. They give him a prescription. He gets that one filled within the next month. I need to go I'm to the sick doctor. again. <laughs> and at this time, I'm working, so I couldn't take him. So I'm like, Mama, I need you to take Snoop to the doctor. And so she took him. And then when we talked, she was like, well, they gave him. Um, no, the first time they gave him the bottle, we went to the pharmacy together. And they it was a certain amount or whatever. But I am just didn't know it was going to cost. And we just was rolling. So I had to go home to try to get the money for it. He was like, no, that's okay. I got somebody going to bring me back, you know, to come get it. He didn't worry about the money or nothing. So the second go around, my mom took him, and then I called her, like, did y'all go, blah, blah. She was like, yeah, but you know, he had sold the first bottle. Oh, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, mama, if you knew that's what he was doing, why you let me take him the right. second time, right? So that cut his whole little game, because he was, he <laughs> he was using that out. one up. Like, yeah, I'm sick. I need to go to the doctor. I don't need no Tylenol. So <laughs> just to say, like, if he told me something, I kind of just went with it, right, thought it was real, because that's my son. I'm just that's thinking, right. you know? That's, so that's mom, it. like, Snoop got you wrapped around his finger. It's like, girl, no, he don't. That's love. I girl. want to ask you something. So I remember when you said that um, you spoke to Mo three because he told you about you know your son and so forth. Mm -hmm. So when he passed away, did you reach out to his mom since you had went through what she went through as in losing a son? Did you try to reach out to her to comfort her to help her? Um, actually, be honest with you, I thought about her a lot. Um, I didn't really put forth the effort, um, and this is what I would say. I will say that usually when a mother passed in Dallas, they try to connect me with her. But when Mo3 passed, no one really tried to connect me with her. But I understand how this go, and I, I don't think that people really do. When someone passed, even though people mean well, nobody wants you running in their face right then. Like, you have to try to comprehend. I told you it took me three years. I, she not going to hear nothing I have to say whether I went there to support her or not, everybody looked like one person to mm. you wow. during that time. So it ain't, so it wouldn't matter. So I just wait on my time and I did get a chance to be with her. So when you, I just understood it. So I, I could just have, I had to stand in the gap and pray on the yeah. sideline, right? Mm -hmm. Because, it's just not, that's not one of them things you just, you need to be running <coughs> to people every time somebody dies. You stay, stay still. You know, if I could change the ways, it's like, give me time. To comprehend mm -hmm. what's going on in my life and I appreciate the prayers and the calls but give me a few minutes see people like like I can only talk from my my point of view is that when a person loves somebody like if I'm a, I'm your friend and I love you and I see you hurting 
I want to be there. I want to help you. I want. I hate to see you hurt. I want to be there for you. It like it, it. It hurts me not to be able to help you. You know what I mean? But tell me this. I would rather you stay out my face than to to love on me through the funeral. Yeah. Then when the funeral is over, I don't hear from you because you because could you know how many people are so extra during that week? Yeah, mm-hmm. If you need me, I'm going to be here. You need anything to drink? You can get your nails done, hair done. They'll buy you a house, a car, mm-hmm. whatever you need during that time. But after that? But after that casket closed and time goes, you know, even with his hometown, they get hyped about May because June coming and that's when everything happened. But it's kind of quiet through the rest of the months. But here I am every day, every Sunday. He has a Snoop Sunday. I'm going to post him on Sunday till I can't post no more since he's been gone. I've been posting every single every Sunday. Sunday. It's Snoop Sunday. So that's the thing. So I, I understand what you're saying, but let it be authentic because I need you to be here nine years later, not during the week of the funeral because that mm-hmm. means all that love you just showed me was in vain. Let me ask that's you this. Uh, Trayvon Martin's mom, you, you met her. Yes, I did. How how was that? How was that you and her, her you and her meeting, both of y'all going through the experience of, of a person who didn't, because the, the related fact is that the people who done this to you guys as sons, they didn't, you know, they didn't get convicted. Uh, Sabrina, and she's a beautiful woman. She, but you uh, see where I'm coming right, from? Right, I understand. Um, she create an event. It's called a Circle of Mothers. I believe we were the first to go, and I think she does it annually. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you look on YouTube, you can see us on there. And she had Le- Lisa Nichols was a speaker. Okay. She had Tupac Mom there. Wow. wow. Uh, Shirley Murdoch was there. Wow. Um, and it was just all of us that experienced the same type of pain. And what I loved about Sabrina, because she wasn't there like, oh, I'm Trayvon Martin's mom. She got in there and did those exercises that we were, you know, the healing exercises with us. Um, we got a chance to pass each other's child around. We had a picture of each other's child, and every mother got a chance to hold that other child's picture to and love on crying. that child. But it was such a great event. It was in Florida, so I got a chance to visit Florida for the first time. And like I said, even meeting Tupac mom, it was so ironic because y'all just don't understand how God is. Man, like, look. There was other people like, oh, my God, I go Miss Afeni, Miss Afeni. We wore our Sunday's best because it was a dinner. So we, we in there trying to look like, I'm talking about red carpet sharp. You hear me? <laughs> so with that happened, and Miss Afeni came in there. She had on some jeans. She had on a regular shirt and the smallest, small little rope chain and some jellies. Mm. Um, she spoke to us, and she kind of just let us know, like, we can't give up. You know, this is not what this is for. Just so happened, everybody taking their pictures, my feet started hurting. So I walked to the back. Um, towards the door where our rooms would be, the exit. Well, that just be where she had to come through there to leave. Wow. And me and her got a chance to talk one-on-one, and she was sharing me how, you know, I'm still going to court. So she was telling me how Snoop, um, sorry, how Tupac's murder still wasn't solved. And I was telling her Snoop's wasn't either and this and that. And she was just telling me, like, do not give up, you know, on that. And we exchanged numbers, and that was just like, but at the end of the day, I still... I understand that was Tupac moms to everybody else, and I was grateful. But at the end of the day, that was two moms who shared the same mm-hmm. pain. Exactly. So everybody that was there, um, Sabrina's family, you know, her mother was there. Um, the father was there, the aunts, the cousins. So it was just a unity there of people that was full of pain. But what they gave us was, and she said, I don't want nothing from you guys. She said, if you want to help me, go back into your community and create your own mother's group. Mm-hmm. That's what she gave us. Wow. So, um, okay, because I remember when you said that you got the case reopened. So when you got it reopened, what did you accomplish with getting it reopened the second time compared to the first? Um, He got two years, and he was going to get zero. Mm. So... This is the thing. That's why I say I just love. I be so excited about my mindset, y'all, because I was so ignorant. Oh, my God. (laughs) And so I just be so excited about my mindset that, like I said, listen to someone, listen to my story. Oh, he got two years. But two years sound like two million years when it was going to be zero. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? So even though I was disappointed with the two, because they did tell me that once we put it back on the docket, the charge was going to change. That didn't happen. So I was kind of shocked in court when they hollered out those two years. Mm -hmm. Um, His family was there. That's my first time meeting his mom. I was really wanting Did to, his mom say anything to you? Yeah, we were. I wanted to fight that day. I was in my flesh that day. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so what happened was there was a group of them, and they were watching. It's like they were kind of like looking at me from across the court uh, room, like intimidating to me. But I'm firecracker mad in my mind. So I'm like, <laughs> let me get up. So I went over, and I was like, is there a problem? Mm. Wow. And his killer was looking at me, and I was like, you sitting over here like you done something, like I done something to you. You took my kid. I said, are you his mom? 
She said, yeah, I said, mm, I haven't heard from you since you, because I, at the, in the beginning when I thought he was innocent, I tried to help him get out of jail when he went, because we thinking he's not, right? So right. I was like, I hadn't heard from you since, you know, and she was like, well, we didn't come here um, for this, this, and this. I said, well, what y'all not going to do is sit over here and stare at me. Mm-hmm. So the girlfriend started like talking and clapping and clapping. I said, baby, if fighting is what you want to do, court will be over in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So the mother got up and went and got the police and he came and was like, ma'am, you know, you're going to have to go to your seat because I'm going to have to start taking people to jail. I said, well, sir, I came here to go to jail today. Mm. And so I got up and went and sat in my seat. And it was just crazy because even the people in there were throwing paper ball. It just was like a, I was in a crazy. comedy show. Like a circus. Yeah, and I couldn't even be, and everybody in there had white hair. So like y'all ain't even tuned in to the world to know what's going on. Right. And then they gave him two years. And his family was boohoo crying. So Lil L- Snoop's killer gets two years, two years and they crying because he had to go. And they we know. Hollering. And did he ever, have he ever confessed to say, hey, I did it? He still, he still trying to say he didn't do it. He actually, um, so ironic for his birthday this year, this guy reached out to me. Actually, Snoop killer reached out to me this year. Mm. Um, I have a cousin. <laughs> they still be talking to the guy and. He asked me if I, he said that he will not been wanting to talk to you. I said, if he's not trying to tell me what happened, then there's nothing to talk about. He said, well, if he's willing to do that, would you want to talk? I said, if he's going to be honest. Well, within, I guess, three weeks, I get a text message, and it said, um, say, call this number. This guy want to do this picture for you of Snoop. But I'm like, who is this? Nobody will reply. I called the phone, nobody would answer. But it's something about that wouldn't let me be still. And I was at work. I kept calling, and he answered. And I said, who is this? He said, um, this E. I said, what? He said, this is E. I said, Edric Stewart. He said, yeah, I saw you retarded. And he was like, no, nah, no. Nah, uh, you know, he said, my cousin's name wanted me, said you wanted to talk to me. I said, you know damn well I wouldn't want to talk to you. All right, man. But that moment, I was like, I heard his voice. Because I hadn't, you know, I hadn't talked to him. I hadn't heard his voice, nothing about him. And I was just like, hmm. So I processed that pretty good. That's when I knew my discipline was kicking in strong because I processed that good. What good came out of that was somebody really did want to do a picture with me. So the number he left, I wanted to know how did you connect with him Him. to get my number? How did this go? And that guy told me, he said, I apologize. He said, I really did not know, but I knew that we wanted to get this picture to you. And we thought that Edric was his friend. Mm. He could get to you. He said, because I seen him in the mall and I said, "Uh, man, it's messed up what they did to Snoop. He was like, yeah, we going to get that. Not not trying to still keep the attention that he didn't. Mm. I said, well, he's the person that has to be God, you know. And so he said he didn't know that. He said he told him that. Uh, and this was after he served time and everything. This is yeah. He only did yeah because he did nine months, I think. Mm. Wow. He did nine yeah, months. But what years. I like about the fact that he served time is that <sighs> as much as he's saying that he's innocent, it's sort of some sort of accountability. Like there was proof. That's the reason why you went. No, um, the only reason why he went to jail is because he had a gun and he shot in a public place. He was only charged with um, illegal use of a weapon. Who, mm. who, um, yeah, man. Um, who, did Meek ever do anything in memory of Snoop? As far as what? Like uh, any. Vigil or anything Yeah, like any, that? just something to. Not that I can think not of. Not more than like, you know, um, I think with music. Was Meek, he at the funeral? Yes. Yes, he was at the funeral. He got Snoop tatted on him. Okay. He does have him tatted on him. Um, I'm actually looking to get with me because Snoop's 10-year reunion is coming up. Yeah. So I want us to connect and do something real big in his name, Um, get, you know, get everybody involved just to kind of celebrate what he was to the industry because and, mm-hmm. and, he was an inspiring person. It wasn't just like this was a rapper that got killed. He motivated people from all ages. I've met so many people from 50 to 60 years old that are fans yeah. mm-hmm. and are saying, your son – inspire me to get up off my butt and do something with my life at my age. So that's what I'm saying. This is a different story. This is not just a, a rapper and then he got killed. So everybody wants to say that's a traditional thing for rappers. They go in their town and get killed. No. To me, Snoop was here just for his amount of time so that he can leave his stone for the purpose. Like At the end of the day, I feel like there's a purpose, right? And what Lisa Nicholson told me that at the event, she whispered to me and I didn't even, couldn't comprehend it, of course. She said, your son, this and this and this, she said, and he has passed you the torch, and now you're going to have to go finish the race. Wow. So I'll tell anybody that Snoop left me 
a blueprint to work. And I found myself being everywhere he was. The first couple years, I was everywhere he was on that same exact time yeah. frame. Mm. 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 Everywhere. Not, purposely? Not on purpose. Wow. Everywhere that he went. I remember me and um, Jay Prince Jr. in um, the club. He was in the after hour. And he was like, man, me and Snoop was sitting in this same exact spot. He said, I had your son right here in the same exact spot. Wow. So it's just different things like that that I know that I'm on a purpose-driven yeah, life. So, you, you know see what I'm saying? With cases like that, I'm the type of person who will look up at God and say, you think you're a comedian, don't you? Man, listen, <laughs> God has a sense of humor. Because at the end of the day, through just think about it from, from what you guys have heard so far about my life, just growing up, I kept saying, I know damn well God did not create me to go through pain, and that's it. Wow. It's got to be something else different and when i finally got and realized what my purpose was that's why i can't let mediocre stuff get in my way because i'm on a real journey right and i have to some things i have to do for god but well, look at christ about. christ when he was here walking on this earth he went through torture went through hell just to get his message across and to fulfill his purpose so a lot of times when i look at yes he's he was human here on this earth, but he was still God. And you can't really look at that. But so some people are like, well, he was God. But then when you look at Jonah, who defied God, went this way, didn't want to do what God intended him to do, but he still had to turn around and, you know, do what he was supposed to do. Or even Job, who went through all of those things and lost everything he had, right. but still had that faith. Mm -hmm. And they were human beings. They weren't, you know, gods. You know what I mean? If they have to go through all of that, why you think we don't have to? Exactly. So I changed the why me mindset to why not me. Because hey. I'm grateful that God chose me to do his work. Well, I mean, this has to be an honor. Like, you know, if God chose exactly. you to do something for him, you're special. Me. What I love it. What um who owns the rights to Lil Snoop's music? Denisha. You own the right. The masters, Boss, everything. So when, Boss when, talk. When you say? <laughs> <laughs> Boss Play. talk. That's so good. let me ask you this. Okay, so do we have any music that's unreleased? He got a few things. I know Mick shared with me. He has some stuff that I could get, and we could just you know do something with it. Um, and he has another verse that's kind of up in the air, but not nothing too new. Did you? And these are, are you plan to do something with it eventually? I and definitely do. Yeah, I did. this is the thing. It's takeoff time for me, oh, right? Really? <laughs> I'm I'm back. When well, you can say like I'm back. I'm so back. so now it's like sky is the limit. You know, I can't really even think about what happened between 2013 to, you know, now because I was in I was discombobulated. Mm -hmm. And so now that God is really healing me, see what in my season right now, God, I haven't even started healing from Snoop yet. I'm healing from my childhood trauma mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. and so that's I what I was I, yeah. I was seeing that and earlier. I didn't realize that there was levels to healing mm -hmm. it is. So that's the thing so that I, when I realized I said well damn I'm, if I'm right I'm still in I'm 1984 still yeah. then I got a ways to go but no it's time now you know what I'm saying yeah. I'm learning how to it took so long and people around me know it has taken me a long time to embrace what my son done what he wanted for me um, there's there's some stuff that that this he is I hadn't even touched yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we was gonna talk about money, like I my family know my team know money is not the thing for me. Yeah. Um, it's the legacy that I'm worried about. Right. Um, a lot of stuff. That's why I say a lot of stuff I do. Money's not even involved. Um. Wow. That's, that's it's a, it's a lot to do, but I couldn't have. I would have fumbled if I would have kept trying to do it. I realized like Denisha, I'm an emotional person. And until I got my emotions disciplined, I was going to fumble the plan. And then all of my son's hard work would have been in vain. Yeah. And because I'm his voice and I'm all he has, I couldn't let it go down like that. How many times did you have? Did you listen to his songs or even pick up the phone to call his phone during all those years just to hear his Ooh. voice? I listened to him. Let me say. So I like to drink Apple Crown. And when I drink <laughs> Apple Crown... Depending on it, I might put him on, you know, because that's when I think I'm a rapper when I'm drinking. <laughs> so I don't listen to him too much, you know, because Snoop will have me going back to the flesh yeah, if I listen right. to Snoop too much. So <laughs> that's real. I mean, like, let me just, you know, but sometimes, like I said, I would think that he's on the road and that's when that happens to come like, you know, he and then reality would be like, dang, no. So I still got his number, the old number in my phone. Um, sometimes if something happened, he'd be like, let me call Snoop. To Shit. Yeah. So those times do happen because, like I stated, one thing I love about Snoop, even if I'm feeling some type of way, he'd be like, "No, nah, Mama, you ain't right about that," you know, and I can accept that. But I do miss talking to him to tell him everything because 
that's who I would run to to tell. Like, let me tell you about this, and mm-hmm. let me tell you about this. So even now, to see how people have, have disrespected me, you know, during times because of him, a lot of stuff, they don't, they know Snoop wouldn't have tolerated that. It's so funny. My cousin said, because Snoop was about his money. As a kid, he would rap. It got to the point he was like, they was like, here comes Snoop, you know, rap for us for two, you know, a few minutes. Snoop was like, you don't have to give me two or three dollars or something. It went from being free to two or three dollars as a kid. And my cousin said, man, the way Snoop was, he'd have been charging to come in his funeral. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. It's just, he was man. different. <laughs> I just want, I, let, let me ask her this. Okay. Um, I just want to say, well, I want to commend you, first of all, and, and ask your question because I'm going to let her go. So I better start. Let me go on, Go ahead because we, we we're we not going to hold it much longer. You made, the, you made it fly out my head. I what? <laughs> Damn it. I remember it in just a second. Okay. Well, you know, like like uh, you mentioned J, uh, uh, Jazz Prince a while ago, and I know uh, uh, J, uh, J, J Prince's son, right? The junior. Mm-hmm. Junior. J mm-hmm. Prince Jr. Okay. So... You, he, I guess he, because I would see him randomly, you know, on videos and stuff with different people. Mm-hmm. Um, he touched a lot of people's lives, man. And uh, when you, uh, when you just think about what happened with him and everything, it just messes with you because I knew he was going to be big. You know, you know, once you see the movement, you know, um, Rainwater. Rainwater is one that he, he's one that also um, uh, love the music. Uh, also, he's uh, one of the guys that. He come on this show a lot too. Okay. Um, uh, he helped y'all with the with the event as well, right? Yes, he did. He did. Um, what part did he play? He played a major part. It was no I. It was a team effort, like I stated. I can't detail who took the responsibility of what, but I do know it was no one person more than others. Yeah. If anything, I would feel that Rainwater paid more, um, or what have you. What I can say is I know he made sure that. Um, the mothers got back to the airport because I heard a story about that to where they were kind of left out. Yeah. And he had to come and rescue them to get them back to the airport. Wow. Man, I just, I appreciate you for coming on the show, man. You are a remarkable woman. I um, anything that we can do, you know what I'm saying? We here, I've been here uh, dealing with the kids, you know, like I said, I understand the thing with Charleston because I, I put clothes on kids back out of this store when they would mm-hmm. get out of juvenile. You can go back, them videos are up. But then it switched, you know, so, mm-hmm. I mean, just stay strong in, in understanding that all, everybody got a coat following. Everybody got somebody that follow and believe in mm-hmm. their movement. You know right. what I'm saying? So, I mean, at the end of the day, man, your son was special, man, and the time that you had with him, man, that's heavy. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So, so you got to take those times and harness those right. times, man, in his memory. And what would he want you to do to represent him? You already know these things because y'all was so close. Right. In this in this interview, what I really feel is the closeness of y'all's relationship. Right. It's the thing about right. it is the future mm-hmm. for him, being that there's no music, you know, it's limited or what have you. Um, my plans, because like I said, he has a little Snoop uh, Four Corners Foundation, and I plan to, like, get an after-school building. Like, I want to have a building with, you know, this is his place. And I want to, well, I don't want to. I'm going to have. Um, no, keep going. I'm going to have um, a counselor in there. I will have the computers for, you know, help with homework or what have you. And I also am going to have a studio in there so that way these kids that want to do music, okay, your grades is what it's supposed to be, then this will be the, you know, what you can get. You can get studio time for being good in school. Give them wow. something to motivate them to stay in a positive room. So that's what I want to leave. So when I die, there's so much of Snoop to keep going that his legacy never dies. And so it's even after me. So right now is the footwork time of that. And it's, it's, it's beyond music. Music was just the key to get the attention. But the overall purpose is to inspire and to just, you know, just show how real God is, but just teach people like you really can be and do whatever you want to do. And the only person going to stop you is yourself. yourself. That's true. I agree with that a hundred percent. Are you? Um, yeah. 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 I, I agree with that a hundred percent. I still haven't remembered. What? Don't worry about what? it. It was a man. Did you take a shot? Man. <laughs> So you no, know, but you know, um, like I said, man. I, I, if people want to reach out to you and just, but uh, so, you know, if they lost a son, or anything, how would they get a hold of you? Well, my um, Instagram page got hacked. The first what? one, mm. you know, people be trying to get you. So I, I had a great following there, but this is what I learned: the internet does not make who I am. So That's I don't right. care about the following. So I did it. I even you created a new had, page. I did, and I've had chances to get my old page back. But when I realized how peaceful I've been without it. <laughs> I was like, I'm a, they keep saying, Denise, you can get your old page. I was like, I'm going to work on it. But 
those fans don't play. Like, I get so many link. Listen to this and yeah, yeah. tell me this. And I get underwear pictures. I get all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I get everything. Like, so I really wasn't tripping off that. But my Instagram page is mandatorily. Okay. Um, and it's the underscore. So okay. if, you, if you type in Denisha Ross, I think it may come up. And if you see the older one, you should see the new one, um, yeah. too. So, And then my email address is snoopforcorners um, at gmail.com. I really don't really deal with Facebook when it comes to the entertainment and fans. That's my personal yeah, one-on-one. Yeah, yeah. So you may hear me say, if them people on the South Side type <laughs> stuff every now and then. But no, that's just mainly through um, either email me or you can reach me on Instagram. What was your favorite song by Lil Snoop? I don't know a favorite. I have a couple of them. I like it's verses. Like if I could take some verses from each song and make a song, make a song. then that's probably what I would do. But he got too many. Um, I, they explicit. Like I just have to. <laughs> yeah. He, but I like. Um, Baby put a song together with Kevin Gates. It's an act like you didn't catch that. Mm-hmm. It's no verse there just do something to me man um because he he just he, he he's saying what he's saying and when you hear snoop you can hear the passion so you're gonna feel what he's saying and he make a thing to say k k k k i swear that i hate niggas and and, and when i hear that wow. it's because i know what he's talking about you see what i'm saying it's because he watched people that he thought were day one change on him how you let his fame change you Wow. Mm-hmm. So just listen to some of the stuff that he had to go through. He has a verse where he talks about he was tired of all the hating. And he said records he was going to break them. People he looked up to, he was going to break their records. He said he was tired of all the waiting and tired of all the hating. And that's because there was there were just times like him being in other people group, they would kick him out the group. You know, he felt some type of way. So I'm just so proud that he stuck with it. Like I told you, this is kind of like, just imagine you being a child and nobody expected to do anything. You mm-hmm. got kicked out of school. You known as the bad little kid in the neighborhood. You walk around here, you're doing all these things. And then 30 seconds later, now everybody in the everybody whole world know. knows your name. And it happened in eight months. From the time that Meek Mill got that CD from June 20th of 2013 was eight months that the whole world, different countries know my baby. Man, mm-hmm. hey man, we're gonna end it like that, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Denisha, for man, me. hey man, you a family yeah. now. We love you. Appreciate that. Hey man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talking. And we out.